YSL Libre. Okay. Yeah, sure. Blessing your feet. Good to see you once again, uh, of course, in this TNS bracket. But yeah, it's going to be Aaron on Smoke with the coldest one out on General Shao with Kung Lao here. Lots of low pressure to watch out for. We already see the up block being showcased here from the coldest one. And that's going to be a big call out against a lot of the smoke pressure. You're looking for these overheads and back two. And even for this uh, uh, 4 3 2 setups here from smoke, that's going to be the big call outs. But we got the nice roll with the back two three. That one checks, that one's gonna be traded a little bit, but we now have Xiao without his axe. Uh, that is gonna try to get some plus range. Not gonna land it, but we do get that last hit to get uh, Aaron out of that smoke below. No real hit confirms coming here from the coldest one out until now. Let's see if we can get some of that uh, optimal coverage. Ooh, okay. Yeah, Goes that's the now hat. That's a very good layer setup right there for uh, General Shao. You have the low hat that's going to hit at the same time as the startup for General Shao there. It shuts down the armor. You have to continue your string right after. It's a great knockdown situation here for the coldest one. And uh, once again, exact same scenario. No armor down back to, to save you. Aaron's going to have to fight out just by blocking in general. Yeah, that's such oh, a no. good... Oh, ooh, this is going to be big damage right here. But oh. drops the combo at the corner side of things. No challenge instead this time. Uh, Aaron trying to get that setup, gets the side switch thanks to the freeze. And we're going to get the corner back again here in this moment. Yeah, that was a very smart side swap right there, assisted by uh, Sub Zero. Let's get that extended time to go for the jump over, too. Nice. Four throw. About even on health here. Armored up. And this is going to be interesting because you do have Sub Zero to kind of help you with this interaction as far as low fireball goes from. Uh, general shout and even low hat goes on top of that so your forward approach kind of is assisted here but i would suspect that we switch from sub-zero unless we only have sub-zero here for the uh combo options that we're going to get the extended combos uh, a little bit easier to confirm through with that freeze otherwise we're probably not going to see armor too much in this match in particular unless we're trying to avoid hat and the fact of the matter is the coldest one was already too close to Aaron to even bother trying to armor up. So we'll see. We're going back to character select. Maybe we do stick with Sub-Zero. Maybe go for another swap because I could also see that Mustard Pie dropping in a $10 contribution to the match. Reno asking for a bit more MK1. Thank you so very much for that. Yes, thank you so much. I completely agree with you about the coldest one out too close. I love that there's like that OS to use uh, the Kung Lao hack to cover those armored um, mo moments, especially from Aaron. That's a, literally a free setup for Smoke usually, but instead the coldest one out has been really confident in it. And once again, no punish on that teleport, but we do get a punish on the follow-up after the vicious briefer. That teleport was absolutely supposed to be the low hat that we were looking for. There's our freeze to side swap one more time here. Yeah, a little bit early on the stand three, just to make it easier to confirm so the gravity scaling doesn't hit too hard on this string. Nice neutral jump. We had the two starter for that one. This is looking like a lot cleaner for Aaron. Again, that slight hesitation. Do you poke or do you wait till the invisibility runs out? But the coldest one out takes back the corner again. And now we're just seeing pure damage drops the combo. Still gets the unblockable practically. No. Oh, do you go? oh my gosh. You get swept at the end of all of that. It's pretty much you have to either block uh, high and then low because of the way that axe is set up. Yeah, that's a very good call out right there. And every single time, Aaron wanted to jump out. And sometimes against General Shout, it's okay to just block. Like, yeah, you do have to play the down one steal. But I mean, Smoke has a lot of options to kind of get out beyond just trying to hold that axe. Oh my God. What a call out with that back two after the Vicious Vapor canceled. The coldest one tried to reach for a throw because we were already disappearing with the back two. See so if we get that combo start. Nice, ducking the knee. Very good crouch from uh, Aaron there. That was super solid. Very good call out. And then again, this is uh, where we're just really seeing Smoke excel and damage output. And especially mm -hmm. against a character like Shao that has 1100 health. No actual uh, challenge here from uh, Aaron, or rather from the coldest one oh. out. And it is now the kicks that take out uh, coldest there. Yeah, in that interaction where the knee went right over Smoke, I have to believe that it was a down 4-3 uh, startup there. That's going to low profile enough where it should be able to avoid knee entirely, but this one going to connect because we already got the hit confirm. Oh, nice. The interrupt put down one. And right back at you, Shao. Not afraid to play that game. 
keeps you guessing. He got the hit from the hat, so we had to kind of course correct there. Dakota Swim was expecting a block. Yeah, we're gonna go for those high kicks on the R plus when they're blocked. Uh, no setup here. Instead, we're gonna get the low down three, but that is gonna get a counter hit here. This should be pulled this one out of the game right now with that damage, and it is now up 2 uh, 0 against YSL Aaron. Very good uh, start here for the coldest one. Again, just that complete control as far as... Like, first game had more control in terms of coldest one holding the corner. This one was kind of a little bit more back and forth. Aaron was really running away with a lot of the invisibility setups. But the one catch that we kind of noticed is that the coldest one... Once he started, they started sitting still in the mid-screen. Aaron didn't really have, like, an answer. It almost seemed like maybe they lost themselves on the screen because there was an instance where... The coldest one went to go up block. There was no punish there. So that leads me to believe that Aaron was probably losing track of the position that Smoke was and didn't get that low attempt or even just like a startup on any sort of string after to try to get the punish. Because that's a big throw punish opportunity there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right now trying to get a hit in, but with because YSO Aaron tried to go for that teleport, the coldest one out was ready. Tried to get the overhead going for a launcher, but couldn't exactly get it. Now YSL Aaron taking up some momentum here. Sets up for the invisibility, but still gets hit by the launcher. And the coolest one out, really showing that patience and just challenging. Again, being able to call out a lot of these moments uh, against YSL Aaron is crucial to stop that smoke, uh, snowball effect. Start immediately here, side swat that we've seen before from Aaron. Ooh. Really dropped it and decided to finish the combo. A nice jab. See, and that's the answer. You see, Vicious Vapor, it's not a silly smoke's turn still. You have to be. Ooh! Ooh. Up the down two right after on top of it. Definitely aware of these strings and uh, aware of the smoke matchup and where and when you can challenge. Yeah, this is a really comfortable to pull this one out right now against uh, YSL Aaron. Understands the matchup, calls it out completely. We're now seeing these optimal combos coming out from the closest one out. That's also going to try to get that set up, but it was a little bit too close on the, down, on the knockdown. And now YSL Aaron's going to try to take back this corner. Still has to hit a couple of times uh, to try to catch up again on that health deficit. Another freeze setup goes up. That's the ender that we're looking for here, that we were looking for in the last sequence that ended up dropping out early and got punished. And a down one, but not supposed to be teleport. It does pay off in your favor since Aaron was not ready for a punish on that one. Oh no. Breaker goes out. That's, I think, the first time I've seen the closest one out actually activating Breaker like this. Be very confident, especially with that low health that's currently there. Down one check. Gets the Kung Lao hat. We get the low button. Doesn't feel comfortable to go for it. We now are Axeless Shao, and this is going to be YSL Aaron's round. 4-3 starter again. Just the stagger pressure this is very difficult to challenge there. And we're also seeing just, uh, you know, Aaron really being able to kind of get away with some of the uh, setups with overheads. Because look at this. Already, we have pulled this one out. Trying to overextend here. And we did get that back to able to low crush. Oh, see, that's what I was talking about in the last game, that we kind of set up this invisibility and do nothing with it once we lose ourselves. Almost afraid of the challenges that the coldest one now has been throwing out, but another yeah. breaker here, but interrupts the high kick. And we catch back a slight to walk back from YSL Aaron. There goes the punish, Whoa. and this is perfect for the side switch. Yeah, absolutely. That back two was reaching. I wonder if we thought that there was going to be a forward approach from the coldest one or just, you know, out of desperation to try to get that overhead to connect. The 4-4 four, four will be safe. Able to sneak in the throw. Down one checks to try to catch. Oh, right now. Oh, we got the overhead and that is it. It's going to be staying alive. And we get the Sub-Zero Brutality as well. The hunt is over. Very good brutality out here, but very good uh, course correction with the down back four from the sky that was able to avoid the ant here and open up an opportunity for you to punish the coldest one right after. Yeah, really good stuff here from Myasel Aaron trying to stay alive now on the board 2-1 against the coldest one. 
Uh, it is looking, it, it was looking a little bit more back and forth. And that, I think that's the thing mm -hmm. with these matches is that um, as you, as the coldest one out is getting more comfortable and like, okay, I'm getting my combos. I just need to be confident in them. Get those opti optimals out. Uh, so is YSL Aaron starting to adjust a little bit late, but hey, late, better late than never, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you do have an opportunity here. Fruity, you can't be throwing curses like that in the chat, okay? The only acceptable curse is the curse of Raw, apparently. That's, you have to understand Twitch culture at this point. Or, or the slab, if you watch curse. Oh, yes, 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 the slab. Yep, that's another one. <laughs> Ooh, a little Ooh. bit early on the overhead there. Yeah, that's the second time the coldest one out has tried to call out on a wake up, uh, especially off of that hard knockdown, and it has not been in their favor. Nice, got the pick up here. Be able to, to get go. the knockdown with the air special move and then get the forward grab. Down three poke. I can't believe the four forward. Yeah, God. that's what we wanted the armored knee rather than the regular knee. Uh, to try to at least find out this corner, of course. We're gonna get the setup. You can't be doing this. We've already seen the setup before. Low hat, we're gonna smother the frames of your invulnerability, or armor rather, immediately after into this fatal blow for a round steal. The coldest one to come out on top for this and still put Aaron on a back foot. Yeah, and that's already about, I wanna say, a third of a way from that second bar from being filled. So that was a perfect opportunity to use uh, the fatal blow. Fills and gets resources back. Great throw tech from the coldest one out. Down one check there. And then we get the overhead. And we were about to continue the combo, but the breaker stops just in time. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, a tested route right there. It works very similar to the um, Mataro route. If you check out the trials for General Shao, uh, the exact same principle applies here. Nice pick up. Again, let's get the under. Not dropping. Yeah, it only took one drop from Aaron, and we've been so consistent with that uh, down four one. Ender, but yo, we're gonna get called out every time for trying to go for these back twos at such a telegraph range. Yeah, it is just because what a slight walk back, and we're gonna achieve the sub zero freeze. That's gonna set up for a nice corner carry. Which is going to lead into some good damage, 33%, and then the slight walk up. Notice that the coldest one out trying to micro duck, but YSL Aaron learned from the first time. This why we didn't see him go for the full combo. Yeah, and you're already seeing. Ooh, that. Is... What a strange interaction right there. Shao turned the wrong way. It should have been a full follow up punish. The coldest one, good on you for being able to stop yourself from overextending and recognizing the scenario here. But seven seconds left on the clock. And we're just gonna keep pressuring here. The coldest one taking it. 3-1 over YSL Aaron. And $1,000 in the pot will guarantee a top eight payout. And plus there are free sponsor quests on the side to continue putting in free money into the pot. And here we go. Our next match, Reiko with the clean cut out here against Tanya. That's gonna be Blackout versus Scar. Yeah, I love seeing Scar uh, once again. Coming back from MK11 had a really strong career, especially towards the end of the MK11 game. And now, I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm really happy to see that Tanya pick. That seems to be the type of style that Scar likes to play, is like from those long range neutrals. Plus, we have the Goro pick that just protects Tanya in a lot of those Ooh. strengths. Yeah, it, it'll be uh, probably going to see a little bit more zoning here from Reiko to really kind of get those confirms. Of course, uh, Tremor has usually been the comfortable pick for a lot of Reiko players lately just because of the command grab and then extension with Reiko, or excuse me, with Tremor. You see it, that's the route that we're gonna go for here. We're in the, yeah, there it is. I was definitely worried if we were at the right variation for Tremor there because it seemed like we were a little bit off for a little bit there. Yeah, I think Blackout was trying to get that right variation as you go. And that's the thing. This is the game plan for Reiko and Tremor, is that you, as the, it charges up, you're switching back and forth until you get to that crystalline version to then go into metallic once you get the hit confirmed. And we're going to go ahead and see both players in Fatal Blow territory right now. And it has been Blackout that's been able to catch with either that down three or down four to then get the Shurikens going out. 
Yep, I mean, that distance game is what we're looking for. You're going to have to be wary of uh, drill kick, especially from Tanya, or when she gets this charge here. We just saw the fireball from Tanya there. Now that we're close enough here, Lucas with a $10 contribution. Great camera work, Lucas. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, there's these mid checks here. Tries to get the overhead as it's a safe move, but we have that safe special ender from Blackout to go for those projectiles, which is um, a high if we're not amplifying them. Scar getting some of these daggers, finally getting the forward throw to push Blackout into the corner, and we get the low, and this is a full launcher. Should be able to kill here with those last kicks, and we do. Goodness gracious. All right, so Reiko being locked down in the corner here. You know, this Reiko skin reminds me of the, uh, what was it, the MK3 Sub-Zero, right? Was the one with the shortcut? Um, yeah, it was MK3. It was... Every time I look at Reiko with this cut, I think he's like the, the one of the uh, assistants to the jocks in high school. But it's like an 80s, like, Grease musical. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I see this haircut, that's why, what I think of that, so. It's definitely part of the Warriors, uh, not the Greasers. All right, here's this good pickup. And then again, we're going to keep that corner as well and get the grab ender. And that's going to put Scar in Fatal Blow territory. And now we just zone out, honestly. There goes, okay, we have Tremor who gets hit in the middle of that. But he does change into Crystalline. Yeah, look at this. Really trying to send it home here to catch up and damage. I mean, nice stagger with the aerial fireball there. That great pickup on top of it with Scar here. Putting Blackout also in Fatal Blow territory, but the one with the OP game to win right now is Scar's. Now we still have Goro. Goes for low with the spin. Hold the block. What a dunk! Let's finish this up here. Blackout. Putting the game on the board. As much as that that uh, grab is punishable, when you're in that situation, like you were mentioning, Scar is thinking of the Oki situation that comes back mm -hmm. from uh, that Fatal Blow, right? And we did see the low kicks into the Goro uh, to keep it safe, but Scar is thinking, okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and back away because he's probably going to try uh, to go for a uh, projectile to catch me off guard. And no, right. instead, Blackout's like, let's go ahead and grab your armor that as well uh, to see, to uh, catch Scar off guard. So Scar could only block in that situation and wasn't uh, wasn't there. It's not crazy. Absolutely. Like, it, it, it's so scary on those interactions here, but Scar swapping out for Sindel, which is interesting because we've also seen Blackout really try to zone. I think maybe we're trying to counter out on top of that. We do have Kung Lao with this pick here, though. So we got Low Hat trying to challenge some Reiko pressure, but it's going to be a battle of zoning for a little bit until we build up enough meter to get close enough to set up this metallic tremor route immediately. The moment we got metallic, that's when Blackout approaches here. And again, that's probably the smartest way to play when you're playing as Reiko, because with this uh, with this cameo, there's that extra damage on that metallic, and then you just gotta uh, be able to switch back and forth so you could get the full optimal combo. But Scar right now picking this up, sets up the Kung Lao hat, and this is the ender on the screen, but thankfully it was far enough so didn't have to get punished for the whiff. Four, one. And jump back here from Scar. Does get hit by the slide though. And we're gonna go ahead and get that extender and the full side switch to keep both Scar in the corner and take the round. Round two, fight. <laughs> Just check out my shirt. All right, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's such a nerd. I, I don't know. He is that nerd. <laughs> Definitely is a nerd. He's bought all the trip pants, worn to school. And had every disturbed t-shirt. Scar trying to get through this projectile battle, but gets hit by those long-range kicks. Despite uh, the kicks being looking short, that just uh, last part of it does ample, uh, does extend rather for that hitbox. I'm gonna have Scar get the forward throw. No real projectiles right after as well, except for the Kalao hat that we just saw here. And it's really coming down to Scar trying to walk down Blackout. We finally get the back throw. That's going to be a down three OP setup and the pickup of the breaker from Blackout. It's going to be able to come in clutch here and keep that health and zoning uh, game. Yeah. 
Ooh, so shut down the start. Yeah, that, yeah, that was unfortunate to cover both um, Sindel and Kung Lao to hold on to those uh, shurikens there. That was a very opportunistic moment for Black out here and clearly coming out on top with a 2-0 lead right now in the set. What a good call on that up block at the end of that. Hadn't been really using up block at all in most of the game and chose to take out that card immediately at the end uh, for the kill. Uh, one thing's for sure, Scar, there's a little bit of momentum, but we're really not seeing that heavy projectile either oh on the Kung Lao hat or into the air. And we're going to go back to Tanya and I want to say Goro. Yep, back to the Tanya and Goro. Yeah. If we could try to pick up some momentum Dark in this third game. Of the yeah, it, the Sindel pick is interesting because of the fact no. that Blackout was Why? played that zoning game. So it makes sense to try to counter with another zoning, but Tanya does have some great tools to zone uh, in her own right. I think it's just like a timing thing of really trying to keep locked down with uh, Goro, and honestly, Scar was doing fine in that first game. I, I'm surprised that we just kind of backed off this game plan to begin with. Yeah, I think that there's like a lot of potential. I think what we're just seeing here is like, okay, how can I actually maneuver against the character of Reiko? This should be a punish and it is beautifully done there from Scar. He's gonna be able to get the most off them and also jump back. No whip punish at the end of that slide, but still the corner is still Scar's. Yeah, I got very lucky with that first stand to the second one. Definitely gonna get punished here. Nothing significant, but Hey, we're starting to chip away at damage. Blackout starting to get that pressure. Cancel in your face with meter shuriken. Okay. We're trying to charge up on the buff. Projectile war incoming. Scar being uh, slowly closing in on the same health as Blackout. We that was a weird parry there. Yeah. I'm surprised that worked out here, but now we got the pickup. Scar should be able to get close to the. I was worried. I, honestly, Blackout thought for sure they were like at max range, and I thought for sure Blackout had that punish there, but a single swipe away, Scar able to take it. Swiping bright for the victory. Beautiful optimal. Got not only the change that Blackout needed to continue with the combo, but also achieved the optimal combo into uh, Metallic. Now it's just plain you gets hit by the Goro. No capitalization though from Scar. Wasn't too uh, sure if that was gonna actually hit. And then there was that interruption twice in a row. Oh, all the stand twos that kept that pressure. The overhead though. No! Shutting down wow. the armor spin and we walk into our own death. Blackout ties up the rounds right there. Shutting down the fireball war with the meter fireball of Scar's own. So we can at least try to walk things down. But again, we're already trying to set up the metallic situation here for Tremor and we just got it. Blackout, I love this game plan. Uh, it, like, it's, it's so smart to go for that situation like you called out of just, I'm gonna zone build up Tremor to get back to Metallic, so then I can close the gap, play my uh, mid-screen pressure with Reiko, and not have to deal with Tanya trying to keep me locked down with Goro. Yeah, and if you really think about it, the chip is what, about 10 to maybe max 20%, and then the rest comes from the 30, 33 to like 35% that Blackout is pumping out, and by the time you're you're done and, and it's like 40 seconds on the clock, this is what you're used to seeing. Scar with this little death health is oh. deficit, and this is exactly where you don't want to be a Scar. We're going to get that off these once more, yes. and that's 36% into death, into the brutal better oh, set. Yeah. Honestly, the other aspect we want to point out too is that Scar only had 950 health. We're getting mixed up either way. But yeah, we do have Chameleon locking down with Johnny Cage. Chameleon being one of the newer cameos and has been getting a lot of utilization. But Reiko coming out. That's some Dexy on Reiko in a minute, actually. Same. I actually uh, thought it was the Blue King, but we are seeing the Tremor. So this is literally the latest two cameos that have been added to the roster. Um, both introduced two mechanics, essentially. We have very Oh my gosh, and there you go. Perfectly done to use the, get the Melina Ball roll going. I was so excited I saw the up block, but we weren't able to get a punish out of it. It was just Red Nose able to still take that turn. And this chameleon stagger pressure on top of it. Like you have so much utilization for Johnny to get quick follow-ups. Dexy with their first significant combo here off the tremor up. Nice. Good break right here from Red Nose and trying to close in on the gap. Mm -hmm. Those jade rings uh, coming back nicely. They do get the back throw. 
And now a little bit of that da dash in. Daggers with the micro duck and the feeling of sexy to clean up the round. Very good micro duck right there. First round for Dexy. Immediate shutdown on Jade, so that does give some time here for recovery. But look at how much spend that we got here on Tremor. It was going to be a little bit before Dexy can make another significant combo here. So that's all opportunity, except Katana does get called out immediately with a stand one. Dexy's been on point with every assist call. Outside of the leader, of course, you just kind of respect that you still have time to punish because you're already so close to Johnny. Anyway. This is such a... Wow! That was such oh. a clean match so clean that it split red nose in half <laughs> split right through the frames here and has to carve his knife gotta be ready you know sharpen it up on the whetstone if you will but yeah i mean that was actually really impressive just systemic shutdown of uh every single opportunity that red nose wanted to follow okay. up with chameleon here oh like, no matter the call uh again oh, just wow. The awareness, like, I, I think players are locking in at this point on understanding, getting ready for the final pro competition as, you know, we've got a few qualifiers under our belt here. We have some seasons wrapping up in uh, Coliseum and, like, another one picking up on top of it. You know, Champions of the Realm still uh, running another season. Their, their finals are coming up. So I think players are locking in at this point for the big bucks. 1,000%. And, again, as this game continues to evolve more, with I, with new cameos, uh, and of course, just with people exploring continuously in the way this game is played, you're gonna have a lot of these moments where these players are gonna show up with some new tech every single time. Ooh. And okay, flawless block, no up block though. And there's still gonna be pressure here from Red Nose. He's gonna be able to get the Kung Lao hat and then go for the forward four. Flawless blocking though from Dexy Dog to punish that forward four call out and gets the metallic cameo as well. Yeah, a few important interactions there. We had the jump in off the low hat from Dex, or excuse me, from Red Nose. Trying to call it the up block, but beautiful duck here from Dexy. I don't think there's any offense that has necessarily worked for Red Nose here because Dexy has just, again, represented the counter to each interaction from not only just Liu Kang here, but even Johnny with uh, Chameleon. Oh, nice tech. Uh, yes. Yeah, you don't want to get caught grabbed by Liu Kang, especially with cameos like Kung Lao, that allow you to just uh, actually continue the combo from a grab. Um, it, it really eats at your health, like, very quickly. And we now have a bit of a projectile war. It is in the favor of Dexy Doe, who's been playing really a good length right now. Or rather, uh, yeah, Dexy for sure. Yeah, in general, in this matchup in particular, Reiko is usually the one to kind of win that fireball war. Uh, yes, there are trades that do happen, but you can even still throw out the EX fireball, but from Liu Kang to try to shut down some of the shuriken, but you're still kind of wasting a lot of resources. I think one shuriken still comes through. Even if you go for uh, low fireball, all it takes is just one leader shuriken call from Reiko to really kind of even the odds against Liu Kang here. But both are going to respect. Ooh, jump three almost came through. I'm surprised no anti air happened. Look at the timing for this. Flawless block Ooh. sliding on into the DMs. Fatal blow to finish. That was just... See, there's like these little slight actual... I want to say like risks, uh, risk it all moments from Dexy that work in so much of their favor. Um, and it's because they're not doing it consistently to for Red Nose to be like aware of it. Like, yes, the slide is there. Yes, there's like those moments where uh, Dexy Dog is doing them and it's working, but it's just Red Nose is not thinking about that. Red Nose is worried about projectiles. Red Nose is worried about uh, how far those legs are gonna actually reach reach him um, from, from the edge of those hitboxes. Absolutely. Hey, you know, if you're going to be zoning with Liu Kang, like, Liu Kang is definitely one of the better zoners of the game. Like, one of. You're going up against the best, arguably, uh, Reiko, if you're on Liu Kang. But we've seen some players, I mean, even myself, playing, um, you know, striker with the uh, Liu Kang, right? Because then you get, you know, the grenade setups to kind of keep things safe. You have, like, a three-fold coverage with just a, a cameo call with the high, mid, and even low fireball with Liu Kang here. You still have your overhead and low 50-50 um, opportunities at close range. And uh, Sunio was representing that actually uh, last week. So it'll be interesting to see maybe just kind of leaning on another cameo for that. But Kung Lao still will get a lot of great confers from Liu Kang. Don't get me wrong. Good defense right now. 
now from uh, Rennes, who's been really trying to keep Dexy away. Okay, we do get the air to air from Dexy. He starts up some pressure, but it's gonna be Rennes who challenges the stagger. Stagger, yeah, we'll do it again. Scoops! We have the tremor to finish Ew. it out, or at least try to. We're just one touch away on both sides. No meter here for Red Nose. Oh, nice. Oh, no full punish there. I don't think we could get a whole lot. That's a tough timing. We're still having to respect the hat block stun, but the stagger pressure does open up a victory here for Dexy. Potentially match point. I love that there's a lot of these flawless blocks in Dexy's plan. Helps with the management of that ship. And then, of course, we block on that Kung Lao hat. Tries to get a scoop going, but not going to be able to. Down one check. He brings out the projectile right after. And another overhead to catch him off guard. There goes the teleport after the uh, dragon kicks, but it's this time Dexy was ready for it, so we're going to get a full punish gonna lead in to 38% plus we're also already switching on that tremor cameo. Oh geez. already got the low. Nice 2-2 two, two into the ender. Yeah and that's the guessing game you play against that 4-4. Four, four. Does Liu Kang follow up or does Liu Kang just remain safe here? Have to be careful on those jumping back from now. It's gonna stop you every time, and then we do have breakers, so that was a good risk there from Dexy to avoid getting hit by the full um, fatal blow. Yep, there goes the grab. Mm -hmm. Four, four. You can either try to flawless block, or you can try to actually hold that, and that should clean that up for this round for Dexy. I think so sometimes that fatal blow does uh, scale a bit, so we'll see now in a second. Oh yeah. You definitely pressing these buttons. You got to mash out here. I don't think you're getting yeah. this kill at all. Yeah, with a hundred and something life left over. One interaction left. The EX low fireball. Rent knows wants to try to close out a round. At the very least, with 15 seconds left, you will succeed. This won't end well. It's scary because you think, like, you can see that you're surviving that fatal blow. But then, it, of course, it's also trying to remember that uh, Liu King has those guesses, especially with the 4 4. Plus, you also have Kung Lao hat. So you have to hold that chip damage mm -hmm. and then also now try to walk down red nose which again those kicks coming in clutch Whoa. side click or side switch rather and we're now in the corner free to do whatever he wants that was a very fortunate side swap right there because that timing can get a little bit tight after the uh kung lao uppercut there to get the pickup with the back too staggers one more time Down for the full range here Back to yeah, that full screen game, right? Just to go for the zoning. We go for low fireballs. There is there is meter on the side of Dexy Dog. We want to challenge with EX Shuriken. I think we're going to try to hold out because we just barely have a life lead. There's that first one. Yeah, a lot of these are going to be flawless blocks to avoid the chip damage. You have to be careful, though. Exactly that. Two of those dragon hits are already forcing Dexy to be like, okay, I have to re think my plan here and, and actually get a health lead at some point. Ducks the dragon, follows blocks the Kung Lao hat. We're back at Ooh. this full screen game once again until we get that meter to somehow make something happen here. Yeah, Dexy missing a couple flawless blocks and now has to try to put in a little bit more damage Ooh. with throw. And now we can just run away with it. It's no, no way. No yeah, that is way. We tried, we had to because of the timing that we had left. There were five seconds left. Actually, we didn't have to. With five seconds left, a single down two could have sent it home for you. Uh, just, you know, kind of pull back, right? I think a little bit of the panic set in for the where the clock was at in that particular moment because a counter hit would have worked out really well here for Dexy. You do have two games to kind of play around with and this one going down here in favor for Red now. So we can still go back into it. Dexy up 2-1 right now still. Yeah, I, that timer, it was definitely counting down. And Dexy was well aware of it too. That's why we saw all of those flawless blocks. But even with the flawless blocks, you're still having to deal with that over and over again. So, you know, you have to somehow make that decision of like, do I close in and try? Or do I keep staying in this full screen and wait for that meter to go up? Because that's another thing. Your meter isn't going up as fast as you're trying to be playing defensive. Right, that's true. Ooh, what's the duck? Phoenix Dragon Kick to get the carry, of course. One coast to coast, so we can kind of back off. You play that zoning game. Oh, 
Oh, oh, that was definitely scary. That low fireball, I thought for sure was about to get punished. But there, like I said, you spent the meter on shurikens here. You do recover in time at a full screen situation by spending the meter to block the low fireball. So you do get a trade in your favor, or you could even go for a jump in after because you're still going to get the punish on Lucan. Great reversal. I don't know if you're He's going to be able to actually get the optimal that he needs. And we're going to catch the wake up, forcing Red Nose to use Breaker at such a low deficit of health, too, by the way, with the anti air to boot. Mm -hmm. Round two. No punish on that whiff grab. And that's again another opportunity for Dexy to continue it, the momentum that they have. And what checks whiff on the grab. Renos finally catching a whiff and gonna try to get the cross up. Does get the Kung Lao hacks to hit, but no continuation for a combo. Let's oh, nice hit. gorge that. That's perfect. That was gorgeous right there from Red Nose, who was trying to achieve that uh, earlier. Scoot this time. Got the follow up with the Tremor setup. I think we were looking for side swap potentially there. It's a little weird to set that up. Oh, no. That's a grab. Fatal? Yep. No! All right, I was. I was holding it because like, I don't think you want to spend fatal here. You want to go for another right because the back two, three, you're waiting for the pop up. We saw earlier where uh, Red Devils went for the stand three follow up. Back two, three is such a quick turnaround, especially with the gravity scaling after his throw that your opponent kind of falls much quicker than you would expect. <laughs> I was going to agree with you when you said, Jared, it's pretty just like, I agree. I don't know about that one. You know what it is? something, Umbral Era. <laughs> You know what it is? Is that I see Omni Man in this game and he is sneaked up. Yes. Okay, okay. That's fair. That's fair. We're gonna have to take you off your gotcha game, okay? You gotta it's gotta stop. Never it's not, it's, it's not trickling into your work. Um Okay, backing away very nicely done there from Turkey. The movement is here. I I actually this is one of the few times I've actually seen how how fast that backdash is. And we have the overhead, but it doesn't land on Umbro, and instead Umbro's gonna get the launcher here to keep uh Turkey in the corner. And again a second one. Yeah, I mean Darius showed up. I don't need to do anything. That's fine, I'll, I'll go back. Alright, there we go, got the throw. Yeah, it's interesting to see this Darius play to not have really all that much opportunity because Umbral is just opening up every single time. It started with overheads, 4-2 starter, and didn't commit to a full string. Umbral taking that first round pretty convincingly. This is a good pickup. This should equal to about 40%, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh no, we're going to get the early. Yeah. 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 One of the few characters that can actually get a full 40% with just about one bar. We got the launcher, no. but no full hit confirmed. Dropped it on the second side of the hit. Yo, got a regular throw. I say regular throw. He pulls an asteroid from who knows where. What's he regular has, about that? I mean, there's only one place he could get an asteroid. That's space. <laughs> what if the rock came from the planet Earth itself, though? You know, just went over to the mountains or something. It was a really low health situation right here yeah. for Umbro. It, interesting that Turkey actually waiting patiently chose to take the throw instead. Does it get the down? I believe that's down well, four, if I'm not mistaken, stronger, against Umbro. Right. Ooh. Full screen clap. Yeah, I got the fly. Another one here. Oh. Very interesting, because yeah, you can get the down one pick up to extend a little bit further, but Omni Man has a lot of really cool routes that just are really difficult to kind of confirm into. Mm -hmm. Outside of like his Viltrumite stance, like Viltrumite stance, you have a lot of pretty simple B and B. I say simple, but it, the routing it takes a little bit getting used to with your muscle memory. But here we go. Already got yeah. the side swap with the low hat pressure. And even with that dash, it, it's a little tricky to to hit because it's both fast, but it also falls uh, slow. Tried to get the uh, thrust in, but not wasn't able to actually get uh, the full ender on that combo. But we nice. did get the sonic clap at the end. Good answer back here. The realms are yours. Oh no. 
And in fact, uh, Omni Man is actually holding up one of the, uh, you know, one of the realms. It's actually the bottom half of the map of when you do the uh, the conquest mode, the uh, that mode that I totally play all the time to get all the unlockables mm -hmm. and don't spend my dragon coins. I never mm -hmm. spend my dragon coins. I did get the outfit for Liu Kang though, so I definitely spent some. You better be spending those those dragon coins before the season ends, Zero. What Wait, good would you they don't go away. The seasonal the ones, ones do. Yeah. yeah. I don't oh, know yeah, about I thought, the seasonal I, ones. I thought you were you were talking about the seasonal ones. I, I, I would love to get like a, a, a an easier time to actually use the gold coins. But anyway, great start here for Umbro Era. It's going to not oh. hit confirm after the Darius hit. The one time Darius gets the hit in and Umbro not able to actually hit confirm. It's gonna lead into Turkey. It's gonna be able to actually get the setup on Kung Lao. Goes for the teleport, oh. but still no full hit confirm here from Umbra letting it drop at the end. Yeah, a lot of stray hits, right? Uh, so the stand two could have followed up right after. If we wanted to go for a 4 2 2, would have been a nice, easy pickup there. We'll just go through down for one. Got the electric ball. Keep the pressure with the tornado going. It's about the full route, so Darius is going to be down and out for quite some time. But that's okay in the case of Raiden, because Raiden's neutral game is just strong on its own. So as long as you're winning neutral, you're going to be fine. But Miltrumite's stance is not a good look. That wasn't even just the, uh, the back two overhead. That was just uh, that's brutal. All right, nice. Overhead here. Caught. Just sleep at the wheel. Darius got the overhead there. Yeah, I like that we go for low electric cell here with metered, right? So you can go for a 350 right there. I like that too right there. Even though uh, Turkey does win this round, that was so smart to get the jump in. Uh, so I think it was jump one and then go for the Superman uh, to go up, get Ooh. away from the Kung Lao hat. Yeah, so it's uh, Gilcher by four, I believe. And it goes for the launcher. to go for a projectile but the punish from Turk. Ooh. Gonna try to jump in, tries to get another jump two going. Oh, we got the Miltrumite <laughs> extension here, fully whipping on those buttons. And now it's Turkey who's gonna be able to be ahead in the health game and play at full screen, very chilly. Yeah, that was a very big call, call out on the EX Miltrumite stance. So you're able to avoid uh, you know, just mid hits, uh, low still gets shut down, right? Uh, you can do a jump in on the character, but you can't do mids or highs. That's back two. Yeah, we set up a barrier of electricity, the overhead low. Yeah, that was very cheeky with the four, four. Okay, got our throw. Back here and again, using that Oki setup. We got the Kung Lao Brutal at the end. It had to have been a, uh, a flawless block attempt right there. We just missed. I, I think we had to because the life deficit was so low anyways. And we didn't want to take any chip. Missed it. And that's the risk of going for flawless block. I would also need to double check. I, I would have to like look back if there was any meter on the side of Umbro, oh. Umbro because that's also something that could have happened. The last breath could not would not have been able to kick in if there was no meter, Ray even on the block. But again, that's if uh, Umbro had the bar. And we also just have to like take a look at how much Perhaps health there was. But, you know, that's one thing too about Kung Lao's hat. Even on it's block, enforced. it does a lot of chip. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was quite possibly just that I have the flawless block situation here in order to survive. Both players actually trying to find where they can start their first uh, interaction here. It's going to be Turkey who's going to win that first interaction as well as that first bar. Three, four, nice. Ooh, say it with your chest. We've got the space that we're looking for in a Viltrumite stance for the teleport. Mm, was yeah. very dangerously close to getting one punish. You have a flawless block though on that low, so that helps out a bit with the chip side thing. Takes out Darius as well, so that did a little bit more damage once the dash thing came in. Yeah, that was a great call out on the dash. Her uh, was able to at least get to the side and pick up with the overhead on top of it. Daria set up for the overhead. Watch the heal. Yeah, we are not blocking overheads. It's a low rise. But honestly, against Raiden, I'll take all the overheads. I'm not going to take any of your lows. I'm not going to get opened up. 
Sorry, I'm gonna do nothing but block low to respect. Four, four opportunities, and I want the four, two, uh, four to happen. Really great setup there with the Kung Lao hat. Gonna be able to get, was able to get that launcher, and now we do have that straight hit going forward, and it's Turkey's gonna be able to capitalize it. And another setup to the Kung Lao hat. Yeah, wants to pressure back into this corner, but we follow through with four, three, four. Four, three, four, rather. Nice. No break. Couple clap here. Good grab. That's also gonna catch Umbro and push them full uh, to the full screen. It's on the way to cover the fly. And it's tough because a lot of the startups here, is, so Omni Man's in a very interesting situation where you can only be opened up low um, by Omni Man. Like, yes, there are highs. Your biggest fear, um, as far as mix goes, is literally just lows from uh, from Omni Man to go for those combo confirms. Because otherwise, you can dump most of what Omni Man brings to the table. Ooh, okay. Chose to actually dash away. Down one checks here from Turkey, plus another down one check again. Gets the Kung Lao hat. The throw whipping completely. Nice. Oh. oh my gosh! No way! Eight seconds on the clock, and Umbro did not want to block fully. Yeah, I mean, that's the. Oh no! Didn't get the cross under here. Kept it safe. Armored through with the full follow up. Wanted to try to shut down Darius before that could come through. Great anti air. No pickup, though, here from Turkey. Nice jump out. We got the electric fly away at the very least. We threat with Viltrumite's stance, and this time it does find the mark. Because we've seen the teleport happen before, so I understand the neutral jump here from Umbo Arrow to try to get the opposite side punish. Great timing on the Kung Lao hat to keep up the combo going. To be able to actually do another interaction here against Umbro. Who be able, who will have to hold all of the damage? Oh, the filter my no. stamp though does whip at the end. It drops completely, so we have to use that breaker to avoid getting hit by all that damage. And that is all Turkey wrote, taking it 3-0 against Umbro. That is very insane to see Filtermite one, which is the command grab that picks up right after for Omni Man to get those larger combo extensions. That, uh, Kato pure on Molina out here with the assist. On uh, pure right here. Oh, Serena, of course. I had it flip flop as Dexy. Yeah, so this used to. Uh, this was uh, Dexy's original main. Right. If I'm not mistaken. And interesting to see the Melina and Serena pick an already a strong start with that anti air. I guess with hard knockdown. Yeah, locked in. You're going to have to hold the Kano pressure here. Dexy coming on the top with more health uh, than pure, obviously, right? Because you have the Kano pick. That's a little scary. Overhead blesses the dome. What a great mid check here from Dexy, who, again, dominant game plan. Already calling out a lot of what Pierce trying to do here. That down one anti air was also fantastic from that game one. Four. Yep, electric cell. They lock in one out. Bird of Prey starter. Back to our hopeless corner position here. We do have full screen set up. Waiting for a teleport or even Kano set up. Great routing. That was so smart from Dexy to recognize that Kano got called out to go for the aerial route as soon as possible to avoid those knives. That's great screen awareness there from uh, Dexy Dog. Insane. Yeah, and that's one thing too when, with the rating cameo. Uh, it, it's all about trying to be very aware of where he is at all times. If you're aware, you you can handle him. Yeah. And that's the thing we saw. Oh, gosh. What a great ball stop there, but unfortunately not going to get a punch. We did see Dexy really kind of shut down a lot of the routing here from Red Nose's uh, Liu Kang. Like, really understood the matchup, and Dexy kind of showcasing that here against Pure's Raiders. Lockdown with Serena. Got to respect the space. That down four is so threatening, but aerial Molina ball. Staggers again. Safe pressure. 4-2 start this time instead of throw. And since 4-2 is a mid, that's a great button to put out here for Pure. Almost tried to call out that overhead. Does call it out this time, though, and gets the back throw to actually push Pure into the corner. 
Dashes up a little bit, but waits patiently just to see. We do get the Serena kick as well. That's such a good uh, ambush attack too, when you kind of think about it. We also get the armor teleport, but it does get broken, so it, it leads into this weird trade that you're seeing right now. Blows. Oh, we can actually... Oh, no, we don't have Fatal Blow here, but we did have meters, so we could have... Oh my god, speaking of Fatal Blow, but we got the down floor shut down. Thank you. You know, as someone that has a high armor move, I feel like even if Pure didn't get the the the, the low hit in that broke the startup, uh, I feel like it would have still whiffed if if it, that happened. <laughs> and I just want to say that that is not fun against <laughs> Raidens. You know, it's just a it's just a down four. Everyone's got Raiden. one. That's not just a down four zero. It's not just a down four. That's a low profiling down four. I mean, everybody's got something like that. Not Natara. Well, you're a, a vampire bat. You, you signed up for flying. Like, you, can't, you can't have it all. I do want it all. <laughs> just like Dexby got it all with all of that damage starting off on the round. Pure is going to have to try to figure out a way and does successfully start up some momentum here. Oh, I love that actually because you got the corner carry there with the 2 4 2. And look at that excellent ender. Right, try to stagger with that. Unfortunately, going to get armored out with this teleport. Something we didn't see Dexy uh, represent out of that corner situation in the last game. Oh no. Definitely was trying to rely on that Serena kick as uh, pure pressing back and challenging. Still, that overhead also seems to be where that a lot of the damage comes from. You get the back throw, so this is where Dexy has caught uh, Pure multiple times, but a back throw from Pure in response, and with Kano to also help with the knives, but the flawless box stops uh, the trip from the heart. But again, that discharge is what's going to keep Pure ahead in the first round. Round two. Oh. Fight. So many lows from Pure. And, and like I said in the last game, right, just that is kind of what Raiden wants to look for. You have this back too to kind of force your opponent to stand up so you can get these low opportunities. That's kind of Raiden wants to condition you to stand up more so these lows can come through. Unfortunately, down four doesn't get canceled into anything, so we kind of just keep poking away at the health of Dexy, which allows for this throw opportunities. This corner situation is going to be great for Dexy. Oh, did it break this? A little bit too far. Okay. Oh! Now to try to call out the up block, and it was there, but no cool grab to actually punish it. But the second round goes to Dexy, very clean, yes. and still maintains corner control. Fight. The teleport away, and the sandwich setup with knives behind you. Ooh, good blocking me. Uh, Lock is in with 35% and now a back throw to get full screen. Kano is still charging though in the background. Full screen, both players trying to stare down at each other. Yeah, and you're letting, trying to make move. Yeah, because you're letting the cameo come back here for pure if you don't try to close the gap, but you're already at a life deficit. Alright, nice. Serena shutting down Kano is actually kind of big here for Dexy. So let's be very careful because Pure is not giving anything in the way of opening up. A flawless block. Oh, nicely done. And I like here that Dexy's trying to be really considerate of the single and then the double blades. Gets the car wheel overhead, tries to go for the low string. Step down one, and I love it. Yes, you have to down four again just to avoid the Serena double pizza deal. I think I just saw a pizza box on the floor. No, it's a book. It's a book. Okay. Just a book. It looks like a pizza box almost. Double blades go out again. 13 seconds on the clock. We actually Whoa. went for the ball roll and then into fatal. That does freeze the time though. So that's 11 seconds left after this fatal blow. This is going to leave uh, deck P in about a, I want to say mid range if I'm not mistaken. So now it's just trying to play patient because it is literally chip damage situation. Oh, no. Took Kano! But still got the flawless block. Yo. He missed the down one. 
that flawless oh, no. is so important. It's over. It's over. It's all. Oh. That I was, was I, crazy. I know it, you said like, oh no to the Kano, but that's what you needed to take. You had to take the Kano because if not, Pure would have been go going into a full chip situation. True. Yeah, you would have helped the the whole blocks done there, anyways. But yo, that perfect flawless block after the teleport was crucial because who would have thought that you'd be able to time that it happened so fast and yes you don't have to worry about you know left rights in mortal Kombat. we're, we're all here for that right it's the high low scare but the fact of the matter is the fastest thing that raiden's gonna be able to do is gonna have to be you know just we could go for ex electric cell but that could have been a down four could have been down three heck a down one would have been much faster Really good stuff here from Deku. Chooses to use all of the three in a cameo and get the maximum for it. 44% with about two bars pretty much used, uh, using that resources there. Tight window for that throw, especially after plus frames from Kano Ball. Life deficit. Again, the interrupt on the overhead. We see the cartwheel come out and it's just down four. Constant interrupt to four, four, three. Oh, jump two with the full follow up right after. Okay. The flawless block does block on the Kano and still gets the overhead, which is where, again, Pure's damage mostly comes from in these situations. Chip damage again on the discharge. Yes, the jump kick, and we're going into fatal to clean it up. I can't believe it. You had the anti air opportunity, but Pure just was. Deer in a headlights as Dexy neutral jumped. We could have taken it with the down two, even a stand four. Or stand three, rather, excuse me. Would have been a better anti air. Four is nice for a little bit of a forward angle on the jump in, but the three hits kind of like closer into an anti air situation, kind of the same range that the uh, drop two does. That low hit so far, too, from the hitbox, but not even close enough to actually get a hit confirmed. And then the breaker here from Pure. And the blades go out. Great recognition here from Pure. Let's try to throw out an electric ball to keep Melina locked in. Good recognition here. But you put yourself in the corner. Tried to set up a Kano situation here and still Dexy. Pull these down ones. Beautiful up block this time. Believed in it. Well, we didn't have Kano to back it up quite yet. We do now though. I think we could have backed up if we were looking for the down four or two. Well, because you weren't going to get an extension if you try to use Kato. So you go for a, a, a block stun reset. Yeah, this was 17% uh, due to the fact that Dexy did a uh, block. Another flaws block and we get a punish. And this is perfect because Pure doesn't have that third bar just yet. It's closing in on that very, very fully. And there it goes. It's used and still in Fatal Blow territory, whereas Dexy gonna try to outspace this here get those single hit blades if you would have confirmed into that electric cell it would have been dead we're at 257 next significant strike Ooh. we didn't follow through but we do have a life lead with four seconds left you have to be so careful respect the lows and we go for a four four three to finish it around a piece in this game three it's just game three it's just game three like you mentioned and it's now going back and forth but Dexy's finally getting the momentum here on the start of the third round. 41%. And we're going to use the armor. Unfortunately, the Storm Cell does catch Dexy in the last active frames of that teleport. Flawless blocks to avoid the chip. Absolutely lap that 4 4 3 every single time to try to get that flawless block opportunity there. You have to. You really, really have to. It's a common route that. You know, you use as rated to set up the electric cell situation, but it's tempering your opponent's expectations of when you're actually going to do it. Uh, so you can alternate for the just a 4 4, or even just go for the, uh, you know, the down one like we saw into electric cell. You try to mess around with the timing, and you're going to get the full punish here. There was meter on this one. We could kill if we spend knives. We got it here. Yep. Close enough to the corner to get that uh, pretty much invisible wall to keep 
the uh, pressure going, especially after the follow-up with the knives. And that's the thing, that ball kick actually costed Dexy so much. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, we've seen before, you know, that it does pay off, right? You, you take those chances, you, again, in Mortal Kombat, messing around with your opponent's expectations can get those uh, opportunities to open things up. And that is very much the story for Raiden, like I was talking about earlier, with trying to go for the uh, overheads more often to convince the opponent to stand up. Um, but yeah, in this case, Dexy leaves such a threat with that full screen ball that it, you can just kind of confirm into off of darn near anything. We have a lot of great follow-up and damage potential. So pure, take your full screen presence to go for low blocks, even kind of threaten the space with dives. Great call here. extension and this is just stagger pressure the down one check to try to get out of here and then we're also using those double blades gets the sweep to try to get out of the corner and back onto that ballless block or like you mentioned it's such a common route but it, it sometimes still catches you off guard and we're seeing that a lot from Dexy who's been able to land really good hit confirms and that are optimal but just not able to capitalize. This challenge though is going to be very nice because we're going to get the side swap and we're going to be able to get the full hard knockdown as well. Tries to shimmy a little bit. It is accomplished and we're going into fatal as No! <laughs> Alright, we have one more shot. I'm so sad. Yeah, that was really unfortunate because this should have been like a fatal blow finish right there. And it's just one of those rare instances that the gravity scaling did not work out in your favor here. Four forward is down forward two. Go for that lightning grab. Locked in. And yeah, that is the call. If you want to shut down armor, electric cell is great. It's not going to work 100% of the time because the timing can be a little bit weird on those hits. So you try to be uh, pretty early with that Oki setup. Dexy Dog gonna actually jump, trying to jump out of the corner. Flawless blocks again, but is running out of health very quickly. And there goes that. Yep, you're gonna have to use that breaker. This is your last chance. If you get hit again, you will not survive this. Pure has three bars to make it count too. Yo, and you see this, right? That, like I was talking about, the full screen crouch block. I dare you to try to go for Molina Ball. I have all the resources in the world. I'll take an overhead all day. Except for now. This is not a good Except look. For now. Yeah, this is not good. And because trying to actually crouch block all the time took those two overheads. And now Dexy trying to get to this game five. Might be accomplishing it. Also was able to uh, navigate around those knives. Lots of respect here. Tries to challenge the space with a down four. Nice neutral jump here from Dexy. And we got the space that we're looking for here with this break. It was a very costly break because now we got the roll through. And able to get the side swap and look at the damage. 341 for it. And one more touch. It's all that Dexy needs. There's a full punish though. It's, oh, that's a very early spend on this fatal blow. That is a very early spend. But I think part of it is because there's no bar on the side yeah. of the floor. So this will help at least get back, I want to say, half of that second bar, if not about 25%. Yeah, 25%. And then now it's just trying to pick it up at some point. But Pure is losing health quickly. Has to avoid the Serena. Oh my god. Yeah, oh, we got the overhead. Oh, no, okay. Yeah. Yep. See, and like I said, the media electric cell is a little bit wonky to kind of time out because that first hit comes out so quick and then the subsequent hits after, like, they're spaced out in such a weird way that you can kind of thread a needle and get a down one in there. I think we went for a fatal blow so early because Dexy already had meter there. So we could go for that full combo route and Dexy could rest pretty well knowing that they don't have to break this route because at best they're going to take 380 when you have one bar. Uh, if you really try to push it, you're going upwards of maybe a little in the 42% range, but your next interaction, we're saving that three bar for fatal blow. So that might've been the only shot in that life bar that Pure would have had to go for fatal blow there. All right, game five, everyone. This is literally to try to get into the top eight side of the bracket. It is now or never for both mm -hmm. these players to try to make every moment count. It's Dexy, who is going to get hit with the Superman. Overheads again. We've got you standing up here, conditioning at its finest, but the flawless block to avoid all the chip. 
and reduce the meter build for pure. So Dexy is the one in the lead right now in a battle of attrition. The flawless block, again, so important in this matchup in particular. It, against Raiden, if you don't have your flawless blocks locked in for a lot of these strings, you're gonna take so much chip, you're gonna allow Raiden to build up a ton of meter. This is just a highly advanced skill set to have in this matchup alone, and something that Dexy Dog is very comfortable pulling off. Yeah, very good um, actual spacing on the Serena kick because it was just far enough that when Pure tried to hit back, that was the cleanest with punish there for Dexy to take advantage of. Good throw tech. Full screen, and again, we can just respect it. I already had the life lead. I don't need to do anything. And you see the timing here. You're going for this setup. You're trying to get pure to open up on the low block and sneak in a ball catch pure lacking and we do right here with that serena summon to get the full extension the teleport mistimed i think we tried to go for a setup there but pure was ready for it immediately yeah it looks like it was just a little bit uncomfortable in that way that was set up um, but we are calling out these lows a lot better we're gonna also be able to block the kano ball it was slightly delayed too so now there's just this nice spacing between Dexy and Pure that allows Dexy to maneuver a lot better versus Pure who's really trying to get closed in exactly like this right now. And keep a corner pressure that's going to allow him to continue this damage easily and meterously as well. And again, it's one of those situations where block, we got to block low against Raiden. You know, especially in that corner situation, right? You have like this massive life deficit, but at least overhead's a little bit more reactable than some of the lows that um, Raiden put out. Because all you're looking for is 4-4-2, four, four, two, uh, four, two, two, four, which is the final hit is a low. And then you're also looking for the 4-4, uh, four, four, which we've seen plenty of times. Ice neutral jump here with a jump too. That was perfect because it's gonna actually keep here out of the corner and recatch Dexy Dog again, not blocking. And even though Pure just got that first bar back, this is just chip damage right now. Yep. Kano Ball hits and then chip damage ball is blocked, but the Kano no, no, no. feels the deal against Dexy. That flawless was perfect, but we opened up at the wrong time. A couple of assists there. Yeah, Motaro is actually. So if I had to rank between the usage of cameos, I would have to say Kung Lao for Sindel. Uh, and also, thank you so much for Runner Adams for the contribution as well. Shouting that out. Uh, but yeah, it is Kung Lao, it is uh, Motaro, and I would say Sub Zero right after for Sindel. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite nice back throw situation here. Good block, but has to respect the low hat. We might have been able to go for a float right there, which would have been very interesting if we could react fast enough. But it's also trying to gamble whether or not we let go of the hat uh, as the teleport came out, because that would make for a very tricky situation for Spell here. Nice anti here. Holy cow. Okay, we got a counter. No hit come from here from Poison. He's stuck in this corner right now. There is that armored cartwheel. Gonna be able to catch, but Dark the Ghost gonna go for the auto target on the ball roll and gonna wait patiently. Tries to catch Coinsy, uh, but Coinsy with that late jump kick allowed them to uh, continue pressure. Ooh, down with the float, immediate break. Tied up. Oh, no way, no way, no way, no way, no way! That was so clever, because you have the armor over the uh, Kung Lao hat, you're gonna be fine there, and you're gonna catch landing recovery here from Dark to Go. What a finish here for the first round, with Koizy taking the lead. I think my favorite change from MK11 to MK1 is exactly that. Fatal Blows actually being used for a whiff punishing tool versus actually trying to use it as like a last chance uh, moment. Um, and it worked so well and it feels so satisfying. Gosh, even the armor difference, right? Cause even in 11, you go for Fatal Blow as like your, your wake up reversal. Like you had that invulnerability and they did that armor change a little bit later on, but even still wake up Fatal Blow used to be very much thing in 11 and now in mk1 it is i like your, to your point right with punish opportunity or even just for a great combo ender like it's so interesting and you need to see how we have it here partner with cameos on top of it the interrupt so from dark to go complete control 
Yeah, this is completely dark that goes uh, round, honestly. And a very clean round, too, as well. Okay, cancels out the cameo, but the Kung Lao hat still catches poison. And we again get that whip punishing uh, ball roll right there from uh, to actually avoid the hair. Yeah, I mean, in any other circumstance, that would have been great because you saw how long it took for that Kung Lao to get recovered. I mean, look at it now. Without having that uh, point from Sindel here to slow things down, Kung Lao gets his hat back so quickly. Mm -hmm. Another very strong round from Dark the Goat. Yeah, the explosivity of Melina cannot be understated like at all she can very quickly put on a world of hurt against the opponent and all it takes is one low ball and that's what we saw in our last set right where pure was remaining that full screen low block just did not want to uh you know get called out by the melina ball because we had that happen a couple times to pure and now we're getting a little bit of uh, a reason why you want to kind of adjust your defense in that way koizy has a little bit more movement with sindel that they have to do to try to cover this ground uh, to try to play the zone again because she does end up floating uh, quite often. That becomes a staple of her game plan, especially if she wants to zone. So she has to kind of be careful. This also, this air ball here has yeah. also been so crucial for Dark to go because it is not only fast enough to actually whip punish at a weird ranges like we've seen before, but it's also been catching Quasi off guard every single time. There is a pause spot. Right. And we're going to get the back throw as well to set up some ulti here tries to go for the down one check not to be able to reach dark to go or rather poisy in that moment that's a lockdown another kung lao setup but dark the goat not biting on the the trap opportunity here to give poison another benefit nice challenge mm -hmm. stand here goes for that damage route to carry coast to coast that's okay set up very hard to block it does get blocked that's almost on top of each other here, so the stand block would have worked out. It'll blow works. And that's another uh, usage of Fatal Blow that we see from Dark the Ghost to fully capitalize off of a punishable opportunity that Quasi has done. Uh, Quasi is also, I think this is the, probably the first time I've actually seen Quasi having a little bit of trouble getting in, utilizing flow. Um, and actually doing those cancels in the air hasn't been able to start the offensive pressure that we're usually so used to seeing with Sindel. Oh, jeez. Stand one full stop. You ran into the side. It's your fault. Great oh, challenge. Yeah. Low hat does actually... A nice little trade here. Not going to really shut down Kung Lao too much for it. This one we do. Yeah, because Sindel took that first hit. This one... Kung Lao going to take a hit, so you have that longer recovery and all the time in the world for Dark to go to close this gap. Spells trouble. Koi didn't have that backup for a little while, so now we're already trying to fight out of the corner. 4 1 does get the first confirmed with the scream reset. It sets up the Kung Lao hat. Dark to go tried to jump away from the Kung Lao hat, and this is the opening that Koi has needed for the entirety of that second round. Final round. Fight. I mean, oh, jeez. All right, so we're going to remove Kung Lao for a little bit here for uh, Dark the Goat. Koizy kind of comes out on top, but immediately after that, Dark the Goat able to get the side slot the cart wheel over the hat. That was so smart. Very good matchup knowledge, too. <laughs> yeah, great zoning opportunity here for Koizy. Was fortunate enough to get at least a Kung Lao hat out there. Unfortunately, Dark the Goat missed the opportunity to kind of shut down Kung Lao as they were being summoned. Remove the hat off the field, but still, look at the position that we're in. And we're... We don't have Breaker on the side of Koizu, so I'm surprised we can go for a full confirm. This movement from Dark the Goat is fantastic, by the way. Just look at, like, going the back and forth and trying to maneuver in and out, utilizing oh, the cartwheel strength to also avoid the Kung Lao hat. Daggers goes for the dash of grab, calling out that Quincy is definitely scared of those down one checks. We have Whoa. the overhead. Down one checks again. Tries to jump away. Oh but no, gets that's... punished. Breaker has still in effect. And Dark the Goat have been holding on to that three bar just for this very moment here, just in case. 
and we do succeed. Dark the Goat taking a 2-0 lead in the set so far. Yeah, with that full bar down there, of course, you know, just one mistake. We can hold on to that. We didn't see a lot of spend there from Dark the Goat anyways, which is fine because you don't need to expend any meter there. You already have Cozy in the corner. They're not going to go anywhere. You've showcased that jumping out's not a good idea because you've gotten the air-to-air -air, uh, Molina ball, which puts Koizy right back in the corner. Melina. And despite, I think what was really smart was despite the fact that Koizy got the west side of the screen, Dark the Goat was still able to go for a cross under and own that corner regardless. And here we go, Mataro pick from Koizy here. I wonder if this is just because like we're seeing Dark the Goat really uh, maneuver Kung Lao Hat without the usage of like any uh, usage of shields, actually, right? So but right. this is a punish from Koizy, uh, a great momentum to start. That uh, Motaro shield also reflected the Kung Lao Hat that Dark the Ghost threw out. Yo. And those are single fireballs there. The triple is the one that's like ridiculously safe. The single one's just kind of just to steal back turns. Nice, Molina ball. The 4-1 just a little bit too far. Amazing movement here from Dark the Goat. Oh. Okay, oh, oh, no. the teleport. That's okay because that still keeps uh, Dark the Goat in the same side. That is tragic though if you're on the side of Dark the Goat because it was supposed to be low hat setup. We did not get it. It was supposed to keep you safe on the dive kick and one touch away. A single blunder can put you in a very bad situation. Of course, about to put a, a, a round on the board. Still needs one more to put a point on the board though. Beautiful. Gets that overhead, especially after the Kung Lao hat. This is a great pickup for Dark the Goat. Another Kung Lao setup. Uh, was the delay on the wake up, I think, is that what's going on with Koizy. <gasps> we have the armor setup, mm -hmm. and we also get the teleport, so we're still really solid here and just waiting patiently. Not gonna work. Forward approach. The forward approach to Bataro will cover the low uh, fireball options, so low hat would get shut down by that. Oh, she's max range, does punish the down one. And the 4-1 one more time here. But look at that, 9.2 health left. The flawless block was necessary here. Oh my gosh, even then that flawless block from Koizy was trying so hard not to get chipped out in that situation. Right. Proud. It's Koizy's last chance here to try to not let this go into a full 3-0. Oh, we are able to get the screen combo going. But that breaker early from Dark the Goat. And this Mataro pick up is amazing. Oh, that's a pickup here from Dark the Goat. I still have the pickup right there. That was, you know, going to be a hard to blockable situation, even if the overhead didn't get blocked. Great anti air. No belief though on the full kick confirm. I love that, using the armor to actually beat out Mataro's projectile that does leave Dark the Goat, so with oh no. no meter to burn here. Yo, every single time Koizy has gone for the advancing Mataro, it's gotten jumped in on. Like, Dark the Goat has been ready for this side swap, or cameo swap, every single time. But this Fatal Blow will even things out here in terms of health. This last part builds up pretty harshly. Still, 45% is really good, especially considering that that was what we were expecting. There goes the interrupt on the Taro cameo. The sun! The sun! That was crazy. The anti air fireball from Dark the Goat to wrap it up. 3 0 victory. Two, because that's where I like yeah, found out Alex Lee is from. Rastro. Rastro. So. I don't know. Demon Slayer so... for you dub watchers. D Demon Zenitsu? Slayer. Yep, exactly. There you go. All right, so here we go. Winner's semis here in the top eight. El Kukui versus Blizzard. We're supposed to see both these players actually on stream. 
Uh, Blizzard is definitely, I, I'm surprised sticking with this Baraka has been so cool to see. Uh, almost like a Baraka loyalist for sure. Uh, using the Striker cameo too. Another cameo that's still super strong, but we're not, we don't really see as often due to uh, Kung Lao being on that same level. Yeah, you know, you do have a lot of uh, the safety net with the striker grenades, but the 50 50 mix that you get with striker is huge because you have the overhead, you have the low. Uh, it, it's very scary to deal with. Uh, nice at the pressure. Great interrupt with that down one on the approach here from El Kakui. Excellent pickup. Let's carry we go. One more interaction is all that Kakui needs. Ooh. Mm, right there. there yeah. Side. Nice block in the overhead and just able to block right after the grenades are going to get this pickup opportunity. And yes, we spend it. It looks like Baraka has no teeth. Like Johnny punched the teeth out of Baraka's face. Ah, uh, you're right. Yeah, because it's like the, the blood. You're oh, right. The blood is there. <laughs> That's oh, all washed off. Right? Nope, it, he, he's missing teeth. All right. Good finish, though. Like, what a turnaround here for Blizzard, which definitely looked like it, it was going to steal a deal for El Kakui. Had we not missed that stand one ant here, would have had a different story. Good air to air, though, to maintain that corner position for Blizzard. Yeah, that's the thing about Blizzard. It plays extremely good defense um, and also has a clutch factor that just, like, makes total sense. Right here, Johnny Kick coming in. Another Johnny Kick as well to follow up with the Kung Lao hat. Jump it. The grenade safety net. You can't forget about the homie. And it's just plus enough on hit to continue a full combo. Ooh. Gets the low. And this should kill here as well, thanks to that launcher at the end. Mm -hmm. The brutal. How much more red do you have to make Johnny's shirt, Baraka? All the Baraka. How lucky was it that for Tarkat to give Baraka bone blades? It could have given him spoons. You know, is Tarkat just another form of uh, necromorphs, right? You know, they... Oh my gosh. Shush. Shush. It just contorts your body, right? In, in the very bad ways. So, I mean, are Tarkat basically necromorphs? I don't want to deal with that, Zero. So, dismemberment. Why do hmm. idolize you? Well, not even dismemberment. You gotta, like, dismember a couple of limbs to, to, to destroy them. I'm, I'm pretty sure Baraka's done if I lop both arms off. Like, what's he gonna do? Grow more bone spears? Yeah, actually, how does that actually function? How does this disease work? Does it grow bones? Is it, like, overdosage of calcium? Is that it? I don't know. The corner carry to start things off, of course. Striker gonna keep things locked down here with another grenade to start that off, but El Kakui able to answer back. Good defense here from Blizzard. Gonna catch El Kakui pressing. Gonna be able to fully quarter carry. And we're gonna get the striker grenade. That's another thing too. Usually that move is used for uh anti-airing, but it's also so good because it's like a two-hit um vertical hitbox as well. That's true, actually. Ooh, get the challenge out. Mmm. Tried to get the Johnny kick going, but that was gonna get punished. Had to use Breaker in that moment. Oh, yeah, that's definitely gonna be a punish for the spin cycle. Fortunately, we got the Breaker in the background here. The block? It gets me every time. I can't block that sucker. I just can't. I know it's a low, but I refuse to believe it. I, I get hit by that all the time. I also question why I can't hit, uh, why I can't block that either. So it's okay. We we say uh, not blocking that zero. Cool. I think that's fine. It's acceptable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very misleading animation. All right, nice throw. Here from Blizzard, though, it's gonna get thrown. Not too far away for grenades to connect here. It's going to be a long cooldown time before Striker gets back. So, opening opportunity for El Kakui. I can't believe 4 3 from downtown. What are we going to get? Oh, flawless, but watch out for the hat. No punish opportunity for you there. Tries to get the leap in, but was unsuccessful. 
And it's El Kukui who's gonna take this uh, second round. Yes. Can I go for the fireball war? Ooh, the anti-air from El Kukui, but unfortunately drops on the combo at the ender. And that's gonna be a full punish here from Blizzard. Good throw tech, even though it was getting crossed up, called it out. I think that uh, Kung Lao spin was a miss input there. We're trying to get Kung Lao hat. Breaker comes into play from Blizzard. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Mm. Tracker grenade's not going to punish the Johnny kick in time. Blizzard trying to forward through, but not going to be successful. It's going to have to eat all of this damage. And this is pure damage here from Fallout's top potential, and then the down one check. Because, of course, Johnny is still... It's his turn. Yep. I mean, that flawless block was great. I thought I heard the fatality music. We just got to check. <laughs> I think I wanted to will the, the, uh, the fatality into existence. I think that's what it was. All right, so strong round here for El Kukui to answer back. And Ludi with the raid. Thank you so very much for that one there. Thank you so much, Ludi. I think this is, at least for me, this is the first time I'm seeing El Kukui actually uh, going with the Johnny pick. So far, it's been really working out. A uh, couple of drops here and there, but it's been able to clean it up <laughs> consistently. And then, of course, Blizzard uh, still playing really solid with the Baraka, but uh, it all comes down to just like those final interactions. Again, Johnny's still is his turn, especially on a lot of those block strings where if you're not very uh, cautious of it and trying to challenge, you can get caught um, in some pretty big damage situations. Zoning game, of course. Trying to lock down the approach. Still able to block despite sitting out sparks. Nice over here. Blizzard getting a strong start. For the, and honestly, we take that little victory, we remove the meter away from Johnny for a bit. Oh, good block. No up block, though. Yeah. You definitely want to try to find those. Yes, exactly what I was going to say. That's, that's really important to try to catch those if you want to get your turn back. Also, these uh, usage of striker grenades, while they do catch um, El Kukui off guard a couple of times, using them like this and not really to protect your uh, unsafe moves can really uh, hurt on that cooldown. Right. Like right here, perfect. Does this hit? Oh, he blocked it in Ooh. time! Very sneaky in there. I was definitely uh, wondering whether or not we were able to get through that. We see some pickups there, actually. We saw it. Uh, we saw it in one of the um, Central America qualifiers where uh, Baraka actually blasted through some stuff for a pickup on Fatal Blow. Okay. Nut punch to get the safe jump going. Kung Lao hat catches the low. Now it's just backing up. Ooh. The down one. Yeah, wants to try to open things up here. Try Good to bait uh, El Kakuri to go for an anti air. It's not going to happen. Watch out for the hat. Good eye here from Blizzard. Yeah, there we go. I mean, it works out. You had the breaker, and you have another breaker to poop. Yo! Oh. Oops! The Johnny Kick splits you in half. Johnny Cage wins. 2-1 lead against Blizzard. Blizzard had a terrifying start in that first game. And just what a turnaround here from El Kukui. Despite getting called out by Striker now and again, like that's just a small safety net. And we're not letting that really kind of bother us. It, it is damage that does add up in El Kukui's health Johnny bar, but... Cage. It's not significant Ooh. damage, and Blizzard's missing those opportunities. Not for lack of trying, just it's difficult to open up El Kukui. Blizzard taking a moment here mm -hmm. to be on the Baraka. character select before hopping Kung in with the Baraka. Striker. And we're going to go back with Striker as well. 
so far, I've got no the layered of offense that El Kukui has been showcasing here against you. Blizzard. Again, just even though you have opportunities to go for, for punishes, it's just there's a Kung Lao hat in the background waiting for you. And while Striker kind of has something functionally similar in grenades, it's the recovery time of that cameo meter that makes all the difference in the world. Look how fast Kung Lao meter comes back as compared to Striker. You've done two grenades already, and Kung Lao still has multiple hat opportunities on the way. Blocks again. You gotta sneak in those up blocks next. A great punish too, especially off of uh, that overhead. Oh, well, Perry comes through, and we get a little bit of star power to build up as well. The jump doesn't work out, and again, the overheads. And sometimes it's safer to not go for those up blocks again. Like it's such a risk against Johnny because you can't always guarantee that it, Johnny's going for those straights. Remember we talked about earlier the. Uh, messing with the opponent's expectations on what routings you're going to take. You're trying to condition the opponent to expect certain routes. And that's the mind game that you play in MK when you're trying to act on defense um, actively, right? Mm. That's when Lao Hat was able to keep Blizzard in a hit stun that will allow Okakui to finish out that round. And again, the grenades and the, the, the King Lao Hat are doing the same mission. What's really key here is that cameo cooldown that uh, is in the favor of El Kukui with that mouth uh, recharge rate. Yeah, absolutely. Let's jump in. Again, we are not showcasing any up block at all, and that gives El Kukui all the time in the world. Just gonna jump in. Not even anti-air opportunities. Like, yes, we got a grenade that respects the time, uh, or, or like gets some space away from El Kukui, but Hat is in the background there. Like, we aren't making the next Next layered offense here. We're not trying to do active defense quite yet. This is down one. There we go. This is actually a good amount of damage. We're going to apply just one more hit here. That's a difficult combo. Goes for the full chop chop series. The stand four. And able to get the air up low. It's so risky when you do when you do that though, because even though that down one did interrupt, it, sometimes depending on the, the distance and how how when that like fatal blow was uh, activated, sometimes that parry will, will will work as well. Right. Yeah. It's it's so scary, like you said. But I think it was autopilot in that we we're gonna go for the down one to try to interrupt as Baraka players will want to do, right? Because Baraka kind of has like a similar down one game compared to. You. General Shao, right? Where they can kind of try to steal back the turn and get that auto shame with back one as an option. See, right after the, the four series, we go for down one to try to still steal a turn here. Nice. Hello. Get away from me here. Low hat set up with El Kukui with a lot to catch up on. And we shut down the cameo assist with the low hat. It was still lingering. So it did give El Kukui the opportunity to punish the aerial spin cycle. And we have to look from Lao Hat to hit Blizzard, but Blizzard recovers just in time fast enough. Oh, the parry, though, no! and we still get the control! No! She's <laughs> taking this game five! Okay. At least it didn't, you know, take a turn for the worse there, because that grenade explosion only helped El Kukui way more than it helped Blizzard, and that could have been absolutely disastrous for Blizzard here, but still able to close it out. Tying up the set to all. Well, Striker just doesn't play by anyone's rules except his own rules. Johnny K, Barack Kula, wow. Striker, Ying Fortress. Uh, they're you... going right in fast too, because uh, they know they, 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 that was the a crazy con round right there. Cage con. Mm, I, would have, it would have been insane to see El Kukui pick up the victory off of that. It would have been a heartbreaker, but it would have been insane. Here, really trying to close in on these distances. Striker now on that slow cooldown. Mm -hmm. Back and forth in the distances here. We're able to completely whip Striker and try to catch. We are able to pick it up after the Kung Lao hat. What a great confirm from Alcacoy to get the full extension to finish it out. 
Like just great situational awareness from El Kakui. And it's been, the, look at the complete patience for Blizzard now. We respect the hat that's there. It's do or die final game. So we're being a little more cautious on both sides even. Yikes. Yeah, down take, two. yeah that was the great call because we knew we were going to get called out by the grenades anyways. Take as much damage as you can with a very quick uh, button there. The down two is wonders. One touch. All that we need here. Nice. Cross under with a stand one anti-air. Round two. Fight. El Kukui playing super patient, like you mentioned, conservative. Uh, doesn't have though a lot of meter to work with after using that breaker. So he's gonna have to try to build that back up all over again. Whereas Blizzard's the one who's sitting pretty comfortably. Right. Grenades go out. Again, the distance between the two. There goes the grenades, and this is a hit confirm for Blizzard. Nice. Corner position with a 50% life lead with tons of resources. Try to steal it back. Be careful. Nice grenade follow up. Try to get the sweep. Blocks the side. The vertical hitbox, and then. El Kukui trying to get out of this corner. We do get the Johnny kick. We're going to try to start off some of that string. But yeah, chip damage. Yeah, that's such a tough guess because we sent that in pretty meaty. So it's either going to be the low or the overhead. And you know, that's a 50-50 I don't want to deal with at that point. Waking up to the final hit of a Johnny string. And I don't have time to react to which one it's going to be. Nice. That overhead, very rare sight from a striker. Air to air from El Kukui. I think that could have been a hit confirm too right after, but this wasn't too confident on it, but still great call out. And nice. the down two as well. Yeah, I love the awareness here from El Kukui. So he sat right on top of the hat. Had to force uh, Blizzard to go further than they probably wanted to. And then also spend the striker to get the safety of the aerial spin. All right, full screen situation here. We could try to chip away just little by little. The duck. How can we holding on to all that meter from the team while that slowly getting it back? Again, it goes out. The Johnny kick goes through. We're gonna dash oh. up and grab. And now El Kukui, so, so close, so is Blizzard though. This is one touch on both sides here. That's Ooh. not the confirm we're looking for. It is a start. Good patience. Could have down one off of that though. Got the finish, but that finish is still here for El Kukui and a 3-2 victory over Blizzard and a great set between these two. And it was this final game that both of them really kind of pulled all the stops. It's hard to kind of use that as your reaction to a Melina Teleport because it comes so fast. Like I said in the previous sets with Raiden, like you miss out on some of the hits sometimes with the startup of that. Down forward two is also another great anti-air option. It's going to be tough to lock Melina down with this explosivity, but you know, we, we kind of here already going for these low blocks to start things off. Yep, and already that low once again. I mean, in very nicely to continue a snowball of the, uh, offensive damage. But what an anti-air here from Dark to go to be able to drop back the last part of the combo, but still get the corner. Yeah, and we missed the wake up uh, amplified electric cell there. Still got this pressure going here. Nice back throw. Oh, great pickup because you have the corner position. That's just going to be fantastic damage. One check here from the door. The ball roll gets blocked, and Pure's gonna able to punish. Yeah, once we own that corner position, it's so difficult for Melina to get out. We're looking for armored teleport potentially. Good flawless block. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, like you called out, Pure is definitely warmed up for this Melina matchup. Especially going up against Dexy Dog, right? Uh, prior for qualifier for this top eight, but a great route here from Dark the Goat. Oh my gosh! That was so smart. Called out uh, the, the actual hit off the team out hat, and then right. kept it going with the size for a full hit confirm. Fight. 
Yeah, this match is going exactly where I kind of thought when I was first uh, looking at it on the bracket. Yeah. There are two really solid players that are hit confirming, that are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Plus, movement is there, but maybe you start to go being on that higher side of the them, just given because of the character that Melina is. But, you know, we also have raid and ship damage. We have those setups. We have the damage. And it's like, you have to use all of your resources to try to get through these games. And look at the way that Pure is just kind of interrupting a lot of the startup here from Kung Lao. There's not been a single Kung Lao sub in from Dark to Goat. Every single one has been knocked down, either from a down four or an already advancing uh, opportunity from Raid. And we saw the electric fly shut things down. And I highly doubt it was in reaction to seeing the cameo assist come through, because look how fast it's going. But we're expecting maybe a Molina ball and we want to trade on that situation. But full screen. Pure will in a low block, just like we saw in the previous set with Dexy Dog. We have all the life lead in the world. And the patience, too. 27 mm -hmm. seconds on the clock. Nice. Uh, Kayla Ball goes out, and we are nice. able to seal it with mid. But yeah, this all comes down to just getting the health lead. And then deciding whether or not you're going to take those overheads or if you're just mm -hmm. going to sit patiently. And especially, again, when you have such a significant health lead, the only way that uh, Dark the Goat's going to continue that uh, amount of damage and open up is if uh, the opening happens within the strings. The overhead is just, what, maybe 15%? And that's about it. Right. Yeah, it... Having to respect the... Like, like I said earlier, too, just... I'd rather take that overhead than the damage I'm taking from raiding if I get opened up. The chip damage is another thing. If you're... I mean, it's so tough to go for flawless block every single time. The consistency is just not going to be there for anybody unless you become somehow a, a, a complete machine at doing so. Um, so there's the human element in trying to defend against Raiden. With Melina, you're looking for that, again, the, to your point, just the explosivity to try to force Raiden into a stand to go for the Melina ball to go through. And we're just not seeing it. Pure has been hit enough low that even at full screen situation, will block low. But there's a beautiful flawless from Dark to go that helps. But now you're locked down with Kano, so you got to kind of Yes, the next interaction starts high. And that's what we've both dealt. We've gotten the expectation that it's going to be a mid or even low starter, so. The charge goes out again. Let's catch with the mid. Mm -hmm. Wallace blocks the down one back and then tries to create some spacing for Kung Lao hacks in this, in this full screen space, too, now. We're actually seeing uh, Dark to go play a little slower compared to some of the other games that we've seen, seen them in. Oh yeah, it's absolutely the gears are grinding of just, what do I do? Because, excuse me, Pure is not giving me anything. Like, I can't open you up. I keep throwing out these low Kung Lao hats. And once the life lead gets detrimental for me, like I, I have to close the gap. But how do I safely close it when I have Electric Cell to worry about and even Kano to back that up? Round two, fight. Okay, great block, and we're gonna use the ball roll to take out Kano too. Now Hack was out. Oh, I said no. anti-air, but it was a deep jump in. Yeah. That jump too makes it a little tricky to kind of uh, get that stand one anti-air. It has to be really deep for that to work out for you. And even then, you're already sitting right on top of the jump too. So it's likely gonna trade. Yep, side slot, jump two, immediate spend, and a fatal blow. Now, I don't think this will kill, especially in, the, in this last sequence here. The four Raidens, and then the, the slam, it's 44%. But we're going to spend the breaker here, yep, because that was your last, uh, like last chance. We have the Kung Lao hat to cover the ball roll attempt. Try to pick yeah. up something here. Jumps to avoid the Kano ball. I'm surprised we don't go for Actually, don't do that. Yeah, I see why we're not doing it. Ooh. I was going to say I'm surprised we don't go for the um, electric fireball. But if you do that, then you open the floodgates for Dark to go, to go for a teleport. So good on Dark to just kind of sit back and be patient here. Okay. 
Kill you're up chat, right now. Calling for Kill Tanya. Up. Okay, wait I'm a minute. I'm just gonna say this might be where we're gonna we we might see Dark try to go for uh, the Tanya pick uh, things to to some co uh, some coaching side things. But I mean, it it also this is the last game. Yep. Dark to go is still on the winner side, so this is two lives, right? This would lead to Dark being in losers if the Tanya doesn't work out. But if that's the case, then there's still plenty of time to like readjust, reassess, and go through things. What do we got here? Dark to go hovering Melina. Tanya is a nice pick. Um, because of that mid range, you can go for the. I imagine the the spin, right? You know, when you go for a spin, you do have armor opportunity to close the gap against Raiden, who wants to really try to challenge. You can kind of Melina. interrupt the electric cell on top of it. Kano, the T all right, so back at it with Molina. Last chance here, and Dark the Goat will be committed this. if we win. Every advantage. All right, here we go. Dark the Goat sealing their fate with Molina. And again, going with your main isn't a, a bad idea if you don't want to try to go for something that may not work. The Kano Ball stopping the disruption of uh, the ball roll to actually uh, punish. Well, works out the up block, but it's too much room for the full punish. And we're able to eject out of the 2-4 route just in the nick of time. So pure, still safe, even though we overextended here. Got the low interrupt. Mm, Yo, Kato sat out there forever. I know. <laughs> uh, and yeah, good. we can be patient. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I take it. I take it. Even if Dark the Goat. Oh no! It was a control the... DC. I, I actually think there might have been a slight lag, actually, because that Kano uh, ball is what probably threw Dark yeah. the Goat off. So they probably tried to slow it down. I think that's what happened here. It would make sense I... because it did look odd how long Kano floated right there. But certainly that's longer than I would expect Kano to float. Define the laws of gravity. This might be into going to... No, we're gonna go for the full ender. Which... Oh! Fatal blow at the end. Would this kill, though? This is a lot oh, yeah, yeah. of we're kill killing. damage. We're ki we're ki yeah, we're killing, we're killing. We're, we're zero. Not killing. We're not killing. We're not killing, Zero. We're not killing. We gotta With turn 50... this into St. Jim. With 50 health left? Like, come on. It's gotta kill. It definitely was not. It needed to, but it's okay. Go ahead. Keep crouch blocking. Ooh! Ooh, nice. I like that. That was smart. But right back into it. Immediate wake up and already has corner position. I like that we're, you notice we're playing with the timing, right? Instead of just going for electric cell. Because four, uh, four, three, that's right after you block that. If there's no electric cell, that's your turn as Molina. But unfortunately, stuck in a corner position between a rock and a hard place. It's really tough to try to call out something like that, especially when you've been conditioned to think otherwise that it's going to be a storm cell right behind you. This is Pierre's chance to take it home and head to the winner's uh, semis. A winner's final, rather. Right. But. Also, Dark the Goat's chance to try to make a comeback here. I've been trying to struggle against these electric storm cells. And there goes the discharge once again. The Lao Hat goes out. One hit of the card wheel. Oh no, caught low once again. That was such a good decision to go for the storm cell as a meaty because that's going to take out the armor move. And that's yep. exactly what it did. We get the full back throw. And there you have it. There was no other way. Oh, victory for pure. Raiden. You know, you could use some Who knows? It might work out against get Turkey. Out of my sight before oh, I yeah. But this Omni Man's pretty strong, too. So. Yeah, for the same reasons that uh, Liu Kang would have been great in this matchup is going to be the same reasons for Johnny. Of course, you are backed up with Chameleon. And remember, we only switched to Liu Kang because... Chameleon got shut down every step of the way by Dexy, so 
Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was top three starter. Or four three starter, excuse me. Stomp. There goes the sonic uh, boom, and we're gonna dash away. Trying to avoid the Jade Razor Rings. We do get the down one check. And now it's just a little bit of this spacing. And we finally land the hit confirm. Should be able to get 40% at the minimum. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yes. He hurts, man! Yeah, oh, of course, because, you know, air combos are, like, the ideal spot to go for. If you're going to go for damage, taking to the skies is always going to be a large chunk of damage for the entirety of the cast. Omni Man just excels at that tempo. But now that you're in uh, star mode, this is going to be tough. See that start up there going to get parried. The side swap for a full punish. Yo. There we go. Ending it nicely done. And already that health deficit is no longer there. We're about even just here. I can't believe we got that much star power back too already. Like what? You just spent star power. That was like optimal as heck. Yeah, that will auto track. I'm not careful. Nice. And Mortal Kombat online with the raid. Thank you so very much. We greatly appreciate it. Two seconds left on the clock. And Red Nose able to steal it with the kick with a taunt after. Star power almost there. See if yeah. we got the activation going after in this round, because we did get a nice little comeback with it here from Red Dose. Yeah. There are very few safe like, moves or like moves that you plus with uh, with Omni Man. His four is one of his better ones. It's the four four with that one right there, the knee. Mm -hmm. But you can't follow up because you put yourself in a very bad situation, which is why you're going to get Kung Lao to back up Omni Man in this case. Yep, this is actually a great pickup in the corner. Uh, Red Nose was trying to get as much star power again as possible, but wasn't successful. We do get the Molina Ball Rope plus the side swap as well. And this is perfect for Red Nose to be able to set up the Jade Ring. The second one's not going to hit, but doesn't even need it. We got the Nut Hood to uh, clean up the first game. Yeah, it, it's, and I can see again, like, even if it was Liu Kang, you're going to be seeing almost the identical scenario happen here. Just that close range pressure is so difficult for Omni Man to really deal with if uh, Liu Kang still chooses to play that way. The way they're playing right now, full screen presence has Jade set up with the Glaives and able to build up that star power meter. We've not seen a lot of usage of uh, the Katana Assist, which we saw a bunch of in the Dexy match. Starting off already with the Johnny kick, but the Tana lift is going to keep Red Nose from getting punished. Just walking back a little bit. Trying to get that spacey and find out who is going to let go of their projectile cameo first. We got the James Ring. Ooh. That's a great pickup here for Red Nose. Jump in there. Not even get any follow up there. I'm really curious, actually. I'd, I'd love to see him. Can get nut punch pickup after the katana assist. No way. I don't think you can. It, it would be a very tight timing. Yeah, th that height is just much too high up there to even try to get the falling uh, three there. Oh, nice. That high starter. Get the ground bounce for a little bit of extension into the corner. Right now, some, some serious health. Gonna have to be very careful. Does open up Turkey though with the breaker. Ooh, <laughs> my gosh. It's so silly. He just flies. If I can't, I'm gonna keep chasing you down with dashes. Couple of the planes. Nice, down one check. Start again with another down one. The stomp low does get blocked, but the second low. He's don't forget about the second low. There's a lot of damage for taking all of that. Renos does get the grab going, goes for the back throw. And we get the Katana fan lift to continue the combo. That was perfect. Oh, we and we do get it, you 
your question was answered, Zero, but it's gonna get punished with the Melina Ball Row. I, my brain is expanding on the possibilities. This is amazing. Oh, that overhead does drop, but no full kick confirm. We do get the final armor move from Turkey to clean it up. No brutality? Unbelievable. You lost, actually. You didn't actually. This is the wrong screen. Um, you dropped the brutality. So as we all know, the rules at TNS, if you drop your fatality or brutality, then you don't actually win. So tough break, Turkey. I was, I was gonna try to see if we could fit like a turkey sucks pun, pun but that uh that, that that it just wasn't wasn't gonna work. Yeah, I, I got nothing for turkey sucks. It's, it's such a unique name, you know. Like who hates turkey? They don't make movies. Actually, you know what? I, I do hear a lot of people dislike turkey as their. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like they're not about the turkey for Thanksgiving. Like, what you, then you just have bad turkey. Then you have bad turkey to work. Your turkey should not be dry. Yeah, your turkey should be moist. You're having turkey at the wrong house. Mm-hmm. Hey, trying to whip punish those uh, that mid string, but uh, turkey was unavailable to do so. But we did get the breaker, and this is going to be a good pickup again. Forty percent practically, if achieved. So we're gonna get the uh, Kung Lao hat reset. Gonna get the launcher going as well. From Red Nose, we're gonna get pressure and try to somehow catch Turkey here. Oh, good blocks. Ooh, the anti air. It's just relentless pressure. And, and there's so much more work for Red Nose to do when they confirm on hits, because some of these routes we're talking three or four times that Omni-Man needs to be opened up, and Omni-Man needs two to three. Ooh. Or sometimes she just needs to have a, a push forward, you know? Fight. Let me come over there and have a conversation with you. <laughs> 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 nice low hat pickup. Gosh. Turkey, you're doing great routes. I just, I have to compliment you on your combo routing. It's great. I think Turkey was expecting that second hit, but that's why there was no uh, press on the Vulture Mike stand. But Red Nose was able to follow up with that sweep, so we, we're going to continue to get that uh, pressure. Plus, we're now on Katana's fan, uh, fan as well, just in case you need that fan lift. We also get Molina. And there goes the size. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Nice. Yo. <laughs> Thank God for Jade having a second opinion about that glitch. Oh, already got star power. We're going to open up here. Yo, down two. You're not going to commit to another shadow kick? That's fine, but the Molina pickup. Right, I mean, look at this damage deficit after just one interaction. You activated the star power, and here we are once again in a troublesome scenario for red nose nice down one able to and ducking a high once again we're ducking throw entirely but the same could be said for both sides here that both of them are very susceptible to being ducked under johnny is certainly much more scary to duck under because of the routes that uh johnny can follow through with uh, leading to mids leading to overheads omni man is certainly much easier to try to duck against it it's just a matter of getting practice against this character because it's Outside of the initial launch of Omni Man, we've seen that kind of the dust settle around this character. We don't have a whole lot of players uh, playing Omni Man. Uh, we've certainly seen some in other regions for sure, but as far as state side goes, very rare appearance. Like me. Because, duh, you're the villain, bro. Not calling Omni Man superhero a villain. A great mid to start as well from Turkey. Looks like Rennos is also going to stick with this Johnny here as well, which has been working really good. It's just that Turkey's been playing exceptionally well, especially with all the routing. Oh no! That is a devastating drop, because now we're going to get the corner swap here, carry to the corner. Nice hat set up. Just one more touch. All that Turkey sucks. The duck again every single time. It's a duck! 
Poverty Man may say that he's a hero because he honestly believes he is a hero. You lose yourself long enough to be the villain. Here we go. Turkey starting up the pressure, gets the King Lao set up, tries to uh, begin some staggers, doesn't anti air the fan lift, instead holds uh, Red Nose's pressure, gets the forward throw. That's crazy, this damage output from Omni Man alone. That, that's what's beautiful about Omni Man. The damage output is just getting there to that damage, which is generally like. We're seeing Red, or not Red, no, excuse me, Turkey really put on a clinic of how you can really get set up. My goodness. Here we go. Another sky route here. We can wrap this up into a victory and we will succeed. Three to one. Turkey sucks. That was a very quick, quick uh, last round, or last Holy. game. It was like super quick. Oh my gosh. It's of oh, characters. Uh, more events on the way. It's a great time right now to be a fighting game fan. And it looks like El Kagui has actually gone with a switch uh, from what we've previously seen, going with the Tanya pick against Pure's Raiden. Yeah, already wants to, which is very cute. Um, Immediate swapping over to Tani, kind of dealing with some of that mid-range, which definitely helps out. We have the armor spin to help through the uh, electric cell here. When you have the opportunity, because right after, boom, you got it. Pop up with Goro. Okay, jumps. Oh, away, does get hit by the Superman, and then the Kano knives also coming in from the backside. But we do have the forward throw from El Kakuri. Between the full screen allows us a charge onto the parry. But that low catches El Kakui. Not the best way. And it could be optimal, and it is. Absolutely. Easy to route towards that 380, especially when you got that pickup with the cameo assist with Kano on the background there for that route. Nice duck, but the down four. You gotta watch the ankles for Pure. Pure is absolutely looking to break it. The buff is fully charged now. No jump in. Instead, it was just an empty jump forward. We do have uh, Goro following up from the string. Flawless box back Whoa. to the and then punishes the throw, but the breaker from Pure. Yeah, that was just a microscopic moment of letting go of block and it was just outside the range. Because, wow, going right back into block at that moment there was uh, very dangerous. I'm surprised the throw still didn't grab. It was just like a fraction of a second. But this confirm off of the metered electric cell and right back at you with the armored spin. Good little lace up here for El Kukui. Follow up. I think that was even a metered burn kick. No, it was not. No, just regular. Yeah, it was. Right. Oh no, you're right, you're right. There was meter. There was the meter, right? There okay. was meter, yeah. I got the replay, there was a flash. Overhead does get blocked here from Elkakui. We're gonna get Goro to cover the kick. That was an interesting up block from Pure, but recovered just in time. Flawless block, and then we get another flawless block, but catches the, the poke onto Goro, and a full oh, no. charge. Oh no. Yeah, committed to fireball instead of an anti-air option. I wonder if it was just like a negative edge opportunity that happened there. Because that was just teed off for a perfect anti-air from El Kui if we wanted to. It's only got nice block on the electric fly. Got the pick up with Goro. One more touch. Fatal blow confirmed. Is all that El Kui is looking for. And there it is. Perfect. A single hit confirmed too. Which is fantastic from El Kui. Yeah, a lot of great answers here from El Kui to kind of contend with a lot of this pressure it's really dismantling a lot of what raiding can do so you do have of course those still uh, those moments where electric cell already is on top of tanya and she does have meter to kind of push out but you're noticing that el kakui is really kind of playing around with the resources that they have available to them in order to counter against pure uh you know pressure so you have the the armored spin which we've gone through after the electric cell block string so it does steal that turn back after you survive the block string from Raiden. Raiden. 
Uh, we've seen those far reaching normals. Being able to counter zone is huge. It must be hard not knowing your birth family. My Ungari sisters are all the family I need. It's strong strike here for Elfukui. It was a bit of a back and forth. But let's see if uh, Elfukui can close that thing and actually gets a punish off of the thing. And it was recovered in so very closely towards Elfukui that Pure had to, uh, that Pure was hit there. <laughs> Ooh. Just to go for that block. The electric cell set up there. Just goes for the ball. Ooh. Very fortunate duck right here. No punish opportunity because Goro was going to be summoned on deck. And great patience for pure, but still going to get thrown. Alphazui able to charge up on the buff. Dodges the projectile. Tries to throw out the diagonal projectile to catch uh, pure. Was not close enough to punish. We do get the kicks and we get the uh, Goro launcher as well. Catch this up. There's a throw. All right, one touch interaction for both sides here. El Kakui with a little bit more to lose. Oh my gosh, Ooh. the armor through. Oh, Excellent no. teleport there from Pure. Another one right after. Trying to avoid the armored spin. Get punished for the summon and nice surviving just long enough, especially with that strong life lead. I mean, strong. I used it lightly there. That was 103 health left just for a chip away victory there for pure. Sure. Trying to close in. Does get caught by that mid. And we also have uh, El Kukui charging up the buff. The breaker comes through. Right. A projectile trade happens. Oh, we're out of there. Yeah, you're not going to be able yeah. to get the 4-4. Four four. Nice little down one. Oh, the cannonball was just short. And then that's a full punish here for Elka oh. Great. That oh, was a cool beautiful. combo, Elka Kui. Love it. Solid, great meaties. Perfect. Stand for it and look at the extension. I think we actually caught Kano in that one too, didn't we? If I'm not mistaken. Oh, geez, the back too. Now opening up. Try to get it with the down one, but a beautiful whip punish the 4 4 from Pure. Oh, no! Had the get up attack, but unfortunately got blasted. Already had the jump and hit. You're backing off just a little bit allowed El Kukui to charge up on that buff. Charges up again! Not contesting it. Just trying to play full screen, especially with this health lead. Walking back. And projectile. El Kukui has to make something happen. There's only 30 yeah. seconds on the clock. Still enough time, but still has to make something work here. Especially yeah, it, with all the chip damage. Oh my gosh, and you see there too the the patience from El Kukui because Pyrrhus finally caught on to the fact that Armored Spin is a, a strong possibility after that Kano route right after the Electric Cell. And already again, plus frames. We don't have the lead quite yet, but we're fully backing off. We want Goro to come back before we try to follow up and it's not gonna happen with seven seconds left on the clock. Pure ties it up one all. It's in these like final moments that we're really like seeing as soon as Pure gets that health lead, backs off completely, lets the, lets uh, El Kukui, Kukui try to close in on the full screen. Um, and because again, who really has the more risk is El Kukui. So the more El Kukui tries to stay back, especially with projectiles like a high that you can just immediately duck and then just wait patiently for El Kukui to advance with the kicks, Pure is, is sitting in a strong position once that health lead happens. Yeah. Yeah, because again, it's that, that patience that we saw in previous sets from Pure uh, against Dark, against uh, Dexy of just, I'm, I'm going to sit that full screen and just kind of hold on to block. Pick up here to also keep this uh, 
side switch. We're gonna be able to punish the Superman uh, as well, but still gets hit by the get up reversal a little bit. Overhead hits in. Cleanly. Tries to get that low. Very sneaky here. Mm. Here, finding the opening. That is unfortunate. We'll take the round. I'm pure hack complete control. It's just round unfortunate that we fight. expected another low opportunity. Likely it was going to be another down four attempt. We got shut down by the mid. There it is. Nice. Caught you with a whip punish. Flawless block tries to respond back with the armored kicks. Only gets the sweep in the end and then back on full screen. Charges up the buff. And throw out this, these projectiles a little bit and also Ooh. try to come through, but unfortunately gets punished. Does get the kicks and the launcher thanks to Goro. Mm -hmm. And he's gonna be able to back the control on the corner. He gets the Ooh. control. And the Kano knives missed entirely. Another staple. We also, got that, we also got that teleport in that last interaction. So now yeah. it's only one hit confirmed for El Kazumi. I need to build up a little bit more bar, but it's definitely possible. And there it goes. Yeah, Flobbering with the spin kicks goes for Goro for the safety. And holds it up at the wrong time. What if we try to go for Flawless there? Um, it certainly wasn't a chip scenario. It was just the final hit that caught you. All right, so 2-1 lead right now for El Kakui. A very, very solid lead right here. Pure having to... Uh, it's actually got more overwhelmed in that match more than anything. doesn't have a female fighting force like... Yeah, and I think the, that one blunder on the, the teleport like just worked out extraordinarily well for El Kukui, especially since the Kano knives missed entirely. And I think that was the safety net for Pure, that I have knives in the background, so teleport's going to be A-OK. -okay. And just the routing that El Kukui took, the knives just went entirely. That was a, a great routing option for El Kukui to turn the tide, really kind of maintain that control. Full screen situation with the life lead here, so we can counter zone. Better zoning option here with these fireballs as compared to the um, electric balls for Raiden. We have to watch out for electric fly and open up on the spin kick. Unfortunate interaction there for Pure. Flawless blocks the storm cell does whiff on those kicks as Pure jumps back. El Kakui though challenges with the stand one. Wasn't gonna be successful on the follow-up. And now it's Pure who, who catches up as well. Nice to slowly chip away here. And calls out the Goro summon. That's unfortunate timing right there. I think. We probably would have been safe if we tried to go for Goro earlier, but I think we were still committed to the spin kick there, so it wasn't going to be able to come out in time. And another one! Nice loop up here from Pure to open things up here. Nice corner carry with the electric fly. Every single spin kick has been blocked so far in this round by Pure. It's been a great way to see the adjustments made by Pure as well. They're being more aggressive in these, in these moments. And really trying to call out El Kukui's habit. He goes to project out. Does hit slightly delayed on um, the floor. Nice job. Watch out. Follow through with the full series there at the 4 3 4. Goes to project out. No uh, punish. Instead, the punish goes to Pure. We actually knock out Goro. We get the back throw. Jack now goes out here from the floor's end. The mid catch is pure though. Wow. And El Kukui tries to clean it up, but the breaker comes out. Yeah, that could have been a fatal blow finisher there. All right, with 18 seconds left, you're gonna hold on to this lead. With no meter, we were able to go for the 4-4 and electric cell just to guarantee that we had this lockdown. Two all in the set. We're going the distance in this winner's final. Mm -hmm. Game number five between these two.
this this match is actually probably the the craziest the way it's been going back and forth right like it, it does seem very often that el kakui becomes the one that holds the control but that also pure has those very solid moments where it does work out in a lot of uh, Raiden's favor. Once we get that locked out, once we get used to the cadence of the armored spin kicks and pure removes that reversal option, pure is able to kind of continue with it. But once that first knockdown goes in favor of El Kui, then it's hard for pure to kind of get that back. And it's the back and forth of who's going to mess up the Oki situation or give enough of a gap to give an opportunity or even make the correct guess on wake up here. Oh my gosh, opened up. I expected a high to follow through so we could try to duck. This is El Kukui's corner right now. Got the Goro launcher. Kano Ball keeps El Kukui though in the corner. He uses the kicks to get out of there. Very high in the sky. Almost impossible for Pure to actually anti air. Good stuff. Oh! Here, a good amount of damage. Already had the install. I can't believe the stand two did not go for that anti here. That's all right. You have a strong lead and the spin to win. Good round for El Kakui. I'm surprised we didn't trade on the air to air. Aren't El Kakui charging up? No. Carries pure over to the corner. Tries to catch a sweep just in case. Uh, Pure was trying to move, do an advancing move. Stands one, gets hit by the Kano Ball on the back, but Pure not blocking and then getting hit by the kicks to get launched. Go. Our forward throw. And look at this lively. We have our, our charge here. Still so activated one more time. And you jumped into it. Immediate break. Okay, that's a cool. It's just about had to seal the deal here in this winner's finals. Buff is charged right now. Oh no! Ooh. I was gonna say, nothing short of a miracle unless if uh, Pure can close that out. Yeah, I mean, already has the backup there for Goro. A 3-2 victory for El Kakui. And El Kakui really finding their stride in this final game here to take it over Pure. That teleport could have been huge, but very handily likely setting up mixed opportunity here in the close range with Sindel if Koizy can have their way but Turkey sucks at a full screen start good luck to both of them in the solution semis oh jeez nice call out on the Kung Lao summon it'll be a long time before Omni Man has any backup on those normals that are so difficult to kind of work with here because he's stuck in unsafe situations so often yeah, and that's going to take away a big plan that Turkey has. Once again, it is gone. Uh, that is a full charge that uh, now Turkey has to wait for. But we got out of the corner, too. You have to, like, also that overhead opportunity. The back two where you warp to the other side of the opponent for an overhead. It's really nice for Omni Man to get out of very precarious situations, but it's so risky because, again, that's safety now, which is why we have hat to back you up when you're doing that. Wow, that stops uh, Turkey. Mm -hmm. Didn't even the Viltrumite stand. Yeah. Oh, nice! Viltrumite mm -hmm. into four. That was a great option here to go for the aerial pickup. Low hat set up, and there's your 4 4 knee. Oh, and again, wow. like, that is the equalizer. That once Omni Man gets in. It is a nightmare. Gets the screen out. Begin the full combo. Tries to delay the King Lao hat as well as the delay the jump kick. Gets another opening here for the screen combo. Okay. Turkey actually using the armor move to get out of the corner and through the right. King Lao hat. It's so fascinating to think about that Omni Man kind of utilizes health as another resource to get that uh, victory here. Because look how much damage we've already taken. But then once you finally close the gap against your opponent, get that significant strike, they pay for it in tenfold. Oh, Bill Stormite stands a tenth oh. here. But the cartwheel, just like you called there, was the one to come through. Final round, 
Fight. Yeah, that's what we need to see more from Poise in those like close up situations, especially yes. in the corner. It is so important. Absolutely. Okay. And now Hat is out. The charge back on uh, Poise's side is tremendous thanks to the buff that uh, Poise placed. Oh, in and out. And open up Turkey. Turkey tries to flaw, uh, up block this time, but gets caught in the opening. And again, the screen combo is going to be able to corner carry all the way. We're out of there. Yeah, we're definitely out of there. Good defense right now from Poise. Oh, nice. You get the booster mic stance. And again, that big damage is exactly where you don't want to be. Yeah, you're going to have no. to break that. Absolutely, because that was going to be a kill route there. Down two solves the problem. And Turkey turns it around. <laughs> when in doubt, just down two. Oh, of course. Yeah, it, you know... It is difficult for Omni Man to get in, but that's the thing is you're fighting for your life to make sure Omni Man does not get in, and it, it's still in that mid screen range. Like, yeah, Sindel can really kind of take control of the match, especially when back with Kung Lao. Like, you have your mixed opportunity there, but great awareness from Turkey sucks to call out the float right above uh, Omni Man there. So we're not going for the stand one uh, interrupt. It is the down two for uh, you know massive damage. Will die. Oh, she said the thing, Zero. She said the thing. She did. She did. Man, what a throwback. <laughs> My God, you know what an opening for a movie. It, it, it is indeed a, a quite a quite a wild one. Oh, I like that using Ooh. the teleport. Still stuck on the same side, but I think that's just because Turkey had moved forward just a little bit. We're gonna get our grounded set up here with the low hat. Oh, man. I do like this mix potential here. It really does open up a lot of possibilities for Omni Man. Uh, especially when you're keeping things locked down with low hat like that. With Kung Lao, it's a great. It's it, it's really good. Um, especially because the way his uh his own like fly in that to auto targets work. Like, it's it's like an overhead that also just makes you uh, second guess the Kung Lao hat. And then like I said, like Quincy is trying to do uh these cartwheels, but Turkey's trying to adjust just a bit more. Yeah, to your point, that's the 2-2. Two -two. The uh, the second hit uh, is that overhead, and it makes that hard to block situation. So, you know, like I called out earlier, so much of Omni Man starts out high, and it's later on in the strings that Omni Man gets some of his better start or better opening opportunities. So covering it with low hat is just so smart from uh, Turkey to create that layering to, again, make that opportunity happen for Omni Man. Otherwise, you, you duck the high and you jab out, interrupt, and kind of steal a turn back away from Omni Man. Low hat there. Yeah, projectile right now. The only real uh, projectile that's contesting Poise has been Turkey's uh, Kung Lao hat. We're gonna use each of my stands to avoid projectile. Poise. Mm -hmm. Alright, nice mid fireball there. Oh my gosh, oh, actually, no it does way. work. That is uh, unfortunately going to warp to the opposite side, you know, uh, just like the back two even, you know, just Omni Man has a few things that closes the gap rapidly, but if it whiffs, it's it's really bad for Omni Man. 2-0 lead right now for Turkey. Good choice, by the way, to also end with that armor move, just in case if Poison really did do anything, whether it be like uh, a follow-up or a special, the armor move would have protected Turkey to close out the round. Exactly. So with this 2-0 lead right now, Koizy probably going to take a moment here to try to figure out what they could do to kind of handle this Omni-Man situation. Much like we're trying to figure out in Invincible. What are we going to do about Omni-Man? Omni or the Viltrumites in general? Kung Lao, Kung Lao, Temple of Kataravala.
Alright, it looks like Crazy Sticky ain't with us well. I'm not gonna go for any more Taro as well. My daughter's lives are not yours to leverage. Screen respect here. Or just walking it down. Yo, the clap hit? Wait a minute. It <laughs> looks like it did. Okay. Great mid check right there from Turkey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 41% here. This, this Omni Man hurts. Yeah, you don't want to get opened up by Omni Man. But again, you have to look at the normal city starting list. So, like, I'm telling he does get a lot of damage, but we're talking high problems. We're talking uh, slower mids. Uh, he's got a couple lows that can start things out. But the way that Turkey layers it with Kung Lao is so, like, it adds another layer of fear because now you have to worry about his overhead, which you kind of always did. But if you do your homework, you're able to challenge a lot of what Omni Man can really kind of threaten you with. Okay, good air to air to stop the float from pressure from Poise. Oh, yeah. Yep. Survive, and I'll keep you as a round two. The Fight. cheeks were hot. Jeez, Omni Man really wants to keep humanoid things as pets. <laughs> He's a Vulture Of course he does. Oh, straight. Oh, no. Okay, that's what actually, that was a great left shaker there from Poise. Yeah. Turkey being uh, very well aware of where the Kung Lao hat is. Is he not broke through my stance to go for the other side? Okay, hey, nice. Actually, the mid fireball is going to avoid the low, so we do get a small punish. Unfortunately, he has to uh, watch out for the follow up hat there. Can't get a, you know, an additional follow up there because of uh, Turkey setting up the Kung Lao hat. Not enough to kill. That one will go. Nice jump. Yeah, that was a perfect time jump in. Even Turkey was unsure if, the, if he was able to avoid the Kung Lao low or that overhead. Hey, but what a pickup, though. Jeez. Still up for you to finish it out. 351 for that round. And we're still safe because a low hat normally you'd be able to punish. Crashes away. Good stagger goes into the down one because it's still his turn. Oh, the low couldn't pick it up though. Tries to get the Sonic clap, but not successful. Yeah. Back to gotta... Poise. Yeah, I mean, so much work that you have to do. Another float, no challenge, but great stand blocks. We armor say it with the chest. 3 0 victory for Turkey. Advancing to this loser's finals. Omni-Man up against Raiden. I never would have thought I'd see an Omni-Man back in a top eight situation. Here. Opposite great side to easily chase down uh, right Raiden. We, we saw Turkey kind of try this matchup earlier in the bracket, but loses final side. This is about it here. Pure versus Turkey. See how these two go at it. Already pure, starting up a momentum with those overheads and those lows and the good defense here to stop uh to from Turk, uh from pure rather nice yeah strong likely for pure i'm gonna say in the last game that it's almost as though health is that resource before audio M makes that comeback factor like you're gonna take a few hits but you can't be taking all of these hits pure with the corner lockdown again full meter here for turkey going into this next round but we have to try to get out of the corner. The 4-4 does connect the second time. Hey, this is where Turkey excels really well with these offies. The down one check, but it is Pure who wins the trade interaction, especially with that low. Doesn't get the last hit of it, but it's all good because Pure is able to catch Turkey back dashing. Now we're back at full screen. Yeah, there's that free low. Oh, whoa, okay, nice call. The down one here. Good flawless block on the King of Ball, too. So, even though it wasn't uh, flawless blocking on the Storm Cell, able to avoid that damage from the 
Game of Ball, but it is pure who's able to pick it up here. It's one hit confirmed from either of these two. Oh no. Oh boy. Yeah, I tried to go for flawless situation right there and it's not working out. You're locked in. Nice flawless block. Was able to avoid some of that chip damage, but the up block will end things out here for Pure to take that first game. That up block was perfect. Yeah, it, you know what? Rare representation. Yeah, thank you, Pure. <laughs> <sighs> These kids out here are afraid to up block because they think they're going to get punished. Nay, I say, you're going to punish the opponent for up blocking. Make them think about your up block. Think about it twice. Think about it a couple of times. Omniman, Raiden, Kano, Kung Lao, All right, a great start Kino. here for Pure. You calling know. out a couple of the things the that Turkey has been doing throughout stop. the match. Right Turkey really trying to keep up the momentum since, uh, since the earlier matches um, and being put into losers has been grinding out losers, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, gosh, the fact that we have Blizzard knocking Turkey into losers. And here we are, like, trying to see. Yeah, Turkey ended up taking down six to get into top eight. And then already surpassed Blizzard anyways, because Blizzard ended up losing to Koizy 3-0. Okay. This is a big pickup. The damage output, like you mentioned. And then again, this is Chip, so that's like a that's literally the 20% of Raiden's game plan. And then easily go into Storm Cell, plus Kano's, uh, Kano Ball is keeping you protected. Yes. Oh my god, already the 4-2 start. But, you know, that is still another issue, right, of just the longer startup here for um, Omni-Man on, on these normals. Butcher might stand here for Turkey. Went that route because of the breaker, I'm sure. It was just trying to keep it as simple as possible and get as much as you can in that situation. But again, those Kano knives just keeping the combo going. Still the turn. Dash back in the 4 4 and still able to get the 4 4 from uh, Pure. He had this life blade, so try to go for the Kung Lao to keep things safe after the low. Once he did get the pop. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. That was so scary. Fight. Yeah, that could have been really bad here, but we still able to recover from it. I love the down one check. You flying to the roof? Is that what you this? Just flew right into the roof. I mean, that would explain all the broken chairs and stuff. Uh, yeah. and, uh, a little bit of a messy uh, restaurant. This is a pretty messy restaurant. I don't, I don't think uh, it gets five stars. For me. Well, it's because they're fighting that they're making a mess. Like it wasn't messy until they started fighting, which you should not do in a restaurant. Hey, there goes the low. It does not connect here, but we do have the storm cell again. Cover bases. Nice. Kano Ball pushing Turkey forward to the corner. Jeez, that 4 4 is so scary. It adds mm -hmm. so much damage because, look, Turkey only needs that one touch, but so does Pure. You can survive closing the gap here. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, interrupt. There it goes. Oh. That's it. That's it. That's it. Was it a 4 4 starter that we whipped? It was a whip punish with the stand one. I think it was. I think it was because it was a it was a very good whip. Punish. Still waiting for it on the replay here. It was, it was a 4 4. See, and again, just the, the regular problems here of Omni Man. My goodness. 2 to 0 so far for Pure. And a great ender, too, by the way, on that Storm Cell, calling out that the best things that could be done there is using Storm Cell to. Pull Turkey, and then on top of that, because Turkey was in the air, couldn't block. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Zero. Imagine if there was uh, air blocking in this game. You know, make it full anime, I hear you say. I, I, you know what? You know, I'm cooking and you're taking. Right. You know, I'm, I'm the one that is uh, taking the plate out to uh, the person who has ordered it. The customer. You are the, uh, 
What is it? Is it the sous chef that sets up the, that plates? Is that it? I, I have or is it, or are you I'll just the you. head chef? Oh. So much frenzy. Just, all right. <laughs> chef Saki. There you go. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a good start here from Pure. Turkey having to use that armor move to get out and actually away from the corner. You dare throw an electric ball at Omni Man? Do you understand the the range, the threat range Omni Man has at full screen? That's not an uh, easy feat to do. Here is Raiden. It doesn't matter. Look, all of this just damage. Oh, oh. clean okay, okay, right okay. there. Go again. Round two, fight. Why worry when you have the power of the thunder? I mean, you too could have the power of the thunder. It bothers you that much. Everyone has the same character select screen. Mm, I'll stick with my Lucy. Plus Natara. Anyways, Stormtail goes out, and this is just a snowball effect of Raiden right now. A yeah. turkey is trying to just get out of all of this damage. Oh no. Oh no, the overhead, and that was it! Well, Anyone, done. Pure with three. Oh, victory. Taking down the Viltramite threat. I'm saying you too. If you if you have such difficulty with playing against Raiden. In winner's finals, El Kakui is the one who sent Pure in a 3-2 match. Yes. And I will expect no less than a game five from this two. A minimum game five. I mean, we'll see, because we already got the first hit going to El Kakui. Getting an extra bar meter on deck. Already has the full screen zoning game. There goes the kicks and the Goro launcher as well. Bro. Buff is up for El Kakui. This matchup is so interesting because, again, that range really helps a lot. Plus, Goro just keeps everything safe. Yeah. El Kakui can just play oh, patient here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, doesn't the, uh, hit confirm. It's a little bit delayed on that teleport. Mmm. Does get punished out here with the Goro. Just a massive lead, but the overheads, we can take those though. At this life life lead, we're a-okay to take some overheads. Nice throw. Not all this though. Hey, relax. 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 Interesting choice to cash out on the Fatal Bro. I'm, I'm wondering if, if there's a, a couple of reasons. The first one being uh, the meter. And the second is, uh, oh no! The Kano 9, they came to support! Rise up and fight. Rare support Kano 9s. Which usually, El Kakui is dodging those. Yes, you're right. Mostly we're seeing dodges from, uh, from El Kakui on these. Hmm. There goes that single hit. El Kakui back at full screen now. Does get the buff in trade of those that single uh, electric projectile. Yep. So, nice block. Still gonna get challenged to that 4-4. Four, four. And again, now the tide has turned in favor of uh, Pure for this one here. But we got the spin cycle. Bit of a delay and then going for the uh, grab here. Goes out the projectile, tries to duck. Oh, nice drill, but the Kato knives again! Oh, chose to buff instead. Gonna let the Kano uh, ball push back El Kui in full screen. Oh. oh no! Okay, a little bit too far on the electric cell. That does happen. If you go for the regular one, though, it does get that pullback if you're at the max range for down four. Oh no. World with. Completely. That is not what I think El Kakui wanted. Yeah. Alright, well, I mean, that turn... Gosh, because El Kakui really had so much going for them. 
in that first round and just one fatal blow mistake like like i said it's okay to take those overheads but once it starts adding up on that damage when you're looking for that final hit to get the kill it starts to run away with you start to panic about it i'm surprised lord lu kang doesn't have bodyguards why would her thrones protect up on the board for pure round one fight Back throw going here from Alkui. Tries to move forward with the mid. Tries to get to kick the kicks, mm -hmm. landing on the last set of them. But no hit on Kano to stop the Kano ball. The patience here from Alkakui. Called out the Kano knives coming through from the high end. And now this is a great pickup. Okay, that's the storm projectile. Hello? Wait, whoa, 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 hey! <laughs> okay, she put her foot out there. I'm like, uh... Where'd that hurt box go? <laughs> mm, right, no nice punch two. there, but mm -hmm. still, it's staggered. Yeah, got the spin side for the toddler to boot. Nice breakaway. But it happened just like this last time. Mm-hmm. No coral no, to no, protect! No! And a repeat of the last game, that first round going right to Fatal Blow immediately. Buying it all up in health. How does Elk really wake up with this one here? I mean, you do have two bars. We could go, yeah, the spin. I was kind of expecting that. And now you're trying to chip away. You gotta watch out, be so careful. There's no Kano on deck, but the electric ball does it. It does actually take out pure, my goodness. Yeah, that was a, a bit of a, a weird take right there, but I, it's because of the fact that I think that the projectile from Tanya is a little bit slower yeah, uh, it, than, uh, than or rather than pure. Yeah, it definitely looks slower and weaker to boot. Like, I think we still had a little bit more health on the side of pure than what <laughs> Elf really had on the table. Yep. Good block here. What? He's got Kano as well, so that's a damage multiplier. Oh, wow, look at that health bar, Zero. And then the drill avoids the Kano Knives, too. Gets the back throw. Seems you avoid those Kano Knives. I mean... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hey! <laughs> tighten it up, El Kukui. Tighten this up. Fight. I love that uh, El Kukui finally got to whiff punish that, uh, that low string. Um, it has been definitely bothering me that there's not been an, even an attempt to try to do so, but I understand because it is such a weird hitbox. Four, three, start. We're gonna lock down your armor start up there. More patient, but we do get the out of the corner with Goro assist on top of Nice pickup with the stand, too. The grab here. Should even out the health a bit, especially for the side of the queen out those projectiles again and back up the way oh my god oh my god that was so dangerous a very gutsy charge right there on the seal yep there goes the armor there from the super superman beautiful armored le uh, legs there mm -hmm. you can wrap this up if you succeed spiral arrow round of your game of peace It's getting a little scary because we do see some of those instances where El Kukui doesn't finish their food, which is a little scary. Um, we're taking chances on the seal setup. I mean, we do get strong leads, but one mistake can just really turn the tide for pure, especially with the, uh, with the ability that Raiden has to confirm combos off of any stray hit. It, it becomes a very different endeavor and pure going to Kenshi. Cyrax. With Cyrax. All right, all right. That has been the play lately, They're going for that Cyrax to get that set up. The Empress is safe, Tanya. I'm no longer a criminal. This is actually uh, an interesting change. 
And I wonder why... Like, I always wonder why those changes happen, especially because it's not like the Raiden's been a bad pick, right? But it's like, maybe that's why, the Cyrax. Yeah, Cyrax to help you out here. You want better lockdown pressure than... I mean, granted, you do get excellent lockdown pressure with Raiden, but it's those full screen situations that you're having trouble with, right? So you do have the sword command grab that or hit grab that you're looking for. And you also have full screen overhead with the uh, ghost. We have a couple options here. Now that you're sandwiched in, stagger pressure. Good. No! Go jump. Yep. Mm, there goes Sento. Oh, he disappeared. You're still able, though, to get the, the sword back into the sheath. Nice. Got a couple overheads. Cyrax is available if we want to. I think we're going to go for a Sento summon in just a moment. Full screen situation tries to get that overhead. Okay, there we go. The falls spot at the end of which chip, but we have the Goro grab! Back. My goodness. Round two. Alright. First round goes to have the sweet. It's a risky trust fall for Tanya to do. Like, you expect the ghost to pick you up? <laughs> right. Oh, good blocks here. Fireball set up. We're gonna get the lockdown with Sento set up right after. Get the pressure going. Thank you so much for the subscription, Yuri Kov. Greatly appreciate that. Sento does not stop just because you bring out Goro, so that was a perfect way to bring uh, Sento from the backside. Up Sento too, and we have it. Yeah, that was a really clean uh, Kenshi round from Pure. Yes. Yeah, exactly what Pure was looking for here. Oh, what an interrupt on the stand too, and able to get the, the Sento summon, but the armor spin kick is definitely going to help things out. But once again, locked in this corner, you have to try to survive the pressure. Doing great, does find the gap that we're looking for to get that armored spin. Wow, what a pickup here. Yes. And this leaves a pure with no way to actually defend oh, no. the grab gets the grab going. Oh Adrian. yo. Mm. Launches! There yes. we go. That's a very rare spend to see on the Cyrax throw. But it didn't pay off because we're still able to recover and get this finish. El Kakuri taking a game too. I like the I like the meter management here from El Kakubi. It's been so crucial, especially in those later parts. And I do agree. I did like the Cyrax spend, but yeah. those are opportunities where like you have to be able to just finish out that food right there. Yeah, the the combo routing was there. You're looking for the ground ender or you know the air combo ender to put the opponent back on the ground, and it, it was fascinating because El Kakubi was just locked into low block. Just didn't want to do anything. Just frozen in the corner because it's so scary. We've been interrupted so many times by Pure. And we're still sticking with Kenshi into this one, which is not a bad call. We saw it pay off here. Like I said, the, the hit grab there with the sword toss definitely worked out. We've seen a lot of the overhead and also the lockdown opportunity with the Cyrax uh, summoning into Sento. Like, these are all things that did pay off substantially. And we still got it with the helicopter lifting off. And a great opportunity here. But if El Kakui can get out of this situation, which unfortunately it started off very bad, we would have that corner position. Round for pure. Very quick one, too, especially with that Sento so cleanly um, brought out. Oh, what a whiff punish here. And then again, Sento set up perfectly done from that combo. And now in the corner, El Kakui is going to have to hold all of this. We do get out with the armored launcher, but the Sento from afar gets thrown out. Yeah, I mean, it's almost just a done deal here. Yeah. That was a flawless round. Very quick round there for pure. My goodness. I wonder what we were trying to do if, like, it was... Uh trying to interrupt the Sento maybe to shut it down so we could go because now uh you could jab out Sento right so 
Hmm. I wonder if it was just a matter of you were trying to shut down the ghost so you could go forward, or if you were trying to go for a flawless block scenario, which would be interesting on a full screen. Just kind of hold that and you go for it after. But if you would have blocked one of those command grabs, you would have been able to close the gap. So now El Kukui might be locking in Raiden to close it out against Pure. Yeah, might have to here. And again, if El Kukui does lose this, this is grand final, so this could initiate the bracket reset if it happens. mansion like the definition of obscenely wealthy. But that I I definitely see the Kenshi picks so much better in that last game. Yes. Let's see if it keeps it if it keeps up. Full screen scenario, trying to avoid those overheads because you know potentially they're going to be coming. Charges up fireball. There we go. Oh no! Yeah, that was a tough. We wanted to came a little bit earlier there rather than right in the face of Kenshi, so that does mess up the knife throw, but creates this beautiful situation where we go for a sandwich setup. Down one interrupt doesn't shut everything down, like you said. Sento is still rolling. And this with punish is gonna kill. I just want to say zero. I was right. Game five. Not surprised. <laughs> yeah, you did call it, right? I mean, it did go game five winners finals, like we said at the top of this, but yeah, you made that call out. Like Babe Ruth out here just said it's definitely going home. <laughs> A lot of these matches, okay, finally getting the opening. A lot of the beginning of the match was just checks um, from El Kukui. Right now we do get the Storm Cell out, plus the King of All to boot as well. Projectiles yeah, go out. Took that hit, I think, maybe. Uh, for sure wanted the flawless block, but at the very least, took the hit instead of another follow-up in, into Kano Ball. Second the full combo route. Trying to chip away. There's still... Ooh. Let's be so careful. Net is going to be very scary for El Kukui. But now, no more Cyrax. So now you can escape. 40 seconds to play this runaway game if you want to. Nope. Mm. Be careful. You can charge for the fireball, but the startup takes too long, so it's going to get punished by the overhead from Sento. Truthfully, El Kukui can really play just safe here. <gasps> oh, no! Oh, oh, my gosh! That was supposed to be electric fly from the sky on that first one, which is why we got the jump three. 16 seconds. You can't do anything. You can't... Actually, no, oh, we need to wait for the five-second mark, because now there's your breaker with seven seconds left. And that will do. We're oh my god, wait, 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 wait! It sucks! Oh. Oh, we did not need to overextend at all in those moments, but was just trying to clean up the round. And Pure actually utilizing Breaker at such a low health and the confidence in it as well. It was, we're utilizing the breaker because the next interaction was going to be, well, actually, at that point, there would have been no reason to spend the fatal blow because the damage mitigation would have been so huge. So we could have held on to breaker for that next interaction. And the moment you lost breaker, that was all that elk or all that pure needed to go for the fatal blow finish. So we do have a reset here. It's zero to zero in grand finals. We're going back to Tanya and pure still sticking. You know I'm fighting with blind, Henshi. Right? Not with Sento, you're not. I, can't I love believe it. Tanya at the calling final, out. <laughs> at the five second mark here, we got it because it does pause time, but yo, that fatal blow. I can't believe the max range caught the landing recovery from the electric fly. And this is a great start, but unfortunately, it didn't get locked down by the helicopter from Cyrax. Oh, wait, go open here. Those kicks again. Goro launches. Pure mm. is ready. Oh. Wasn't I? Don't think wasn't too confident in trying to land that hit. So I'm gonna keep the sandwich position. We get the overhead. It's beautiful. It's just so tough to survive once you do get sandwiched up like that with uh, the Sento and Kenshi. Yeah. So, it's and then also with limited resources too, right? Like you yep. Okay. Does that punish off of the um or uh here the leap from King Chief? That was a deep jump in with nothing? Alright, alright, alright. 
getting respect on both sides here. Pure with the life deficit, though. Oh, no. There goes Sento creeping and catches yep. El Kutui there. Goes the grab. And get the forward throw. Okay, there we go. Ooh. Got the two. And that should finish here. El Kutui tying it up in rounds. The full screen fireball game will work out for now. Oh, that extended range on the pole arm. We can play that right away, dude. You have a strong life lead, but you have to worry about these ghost overheads. It's interesting because we're going full screen to avoid the sandwich setup from Sento because there's so many ways that Kenshi can set that up, especially when backed by Cyrax to keep things covered. Full screen, one more time. Just outside the range of the overhead. Whoa, tricky. And again, this is where El I feel like is doing really good. Like, staying back. Again, those uh, overheads, as scary as they are, they are full punishable. Still fully uh, punishable. Um, it's just depending on what characters you have. And you can really right. sit back here and do either projectile back or just, again, play patient, walk back. Yep. You walk back. Um, we've seen a couple instances where El Kakui would go for the armor legs, you know, the spin just to close that gap. It's just depending upon the range that you're at when the overhead comes through. Because then you armor through. We've seen uh, Goro back it up just in case the recovery comes in time. But yeah, when Sento is out, it, it's always tough for El Kakui. So that's why we constantly see this full screen game Becoming from El Kakui here to go for the career. seal setup to get our projectile to challenge against Kenshi. And you don't get that opportunity to set up Sento in a way that's going to be useful at a full screen because Sento takes forever to walk over there. 15 miles both ways uphill. Block. Charged up. Ooh. Okay, the duck works in favor for Kenshi here. Sento catches El Kukui in the air, but the armor kick takes out Sento and also launches Pure here thanks to Goro. Right. Oh, nice back step here for Pure. Able to get this whip punish. Sento to follow up. No cross under opportunity here, so we do get the side swap. Let's look at that sandwich with chips. Do I get a cola with that, though? Good charge up. Nice. Oh no, see, again, and that happened in our first game in the previous set. Like, it was supposed to be uh, a full follow up, and El Kukui just not getting the confirm that we're looking for. Okay, these are the sandwich situations right now that we know from, El uh, from Pure, rather, but El Kukui tries to get out of there. The breaker, though, from Pure stops the uh, damage. Jeez, yeah, I got the sand too. Yo, you are just a sneeze away from death, and El Kukui really trying to give up this opportunity. A couple nets could be coming through, but the yo, the down three poke is wild out here, and Pure putting a game on the board. All right, there you go, Pure on the board, tying it up like you said. Again, I still say that this is going to be another game five, Zero. It's probably going to be another game five. I'm with you on that. The way these two are playing, it's going to be another game five. But do we get Raiden at this point? Do we call the audible early and put Raiden on the board? Because we... No, nope, stick with that. Okay. okay. Well then. We did get a game with Tanya, so it might be too early to call. And 
Raiden did not win for you in the uh, previous set. So, we'll see. Nice up block. Too close to set up the seal. We've seen that happen before from El Kikui, and it would have punished previously. Uh, pure covering it. There goes Senso coming from the backside. Are you catching there? But we do have Goro to pick up on the last hit. Here tries to get a kick in, but there was a punch on with stand one too, but no hit confirmed. All right, full screen situation here. It's so scary because at any given moment, Pure is going to be like, all right, cool, I'll just go for these overheads. Oh, what a backstab! It was just the smallest of back steps, but it is the perfect range here. El Kakui can finish a round for this one. Just a round, but at what cost? No fatal blow going into the next one here. But at least you're setting your foot in the door to victory here for your second game, potentially. Just the one round, though, halfway there. And that was a great usage of that Fatal Blow. Clean it out, close it as well. And then also notice the meter on both sides. It's pretty much equal to both. With now El Kukui finally utilizing that uh, one bar. It's crazy how often El Kukui gets away with charging up seal at the mid-screen range, especially against Kenshi. But nice. What a good dash up punish. Let's set up there and nice back step from Pure to get the whiff punish. Yeah, the movement from these two players is just extraordinary right now. Block, Sento down. Yeah, we should actually get a game here. Yup, here it goes, El Kukui now on the 4-2-1. Much stronger round right there. Very and much stronger round, yeah. And movement was definitely key so far for that set because El Kukui was really try to cover a lot of whip punish opportunities to stay in that sweet spot to avoid a lot of the overhead opportunities and kept charged up at full screen situations, but some very scary situations to charge up still. Uh, with Pure going down another game. I mean, Kenshi's doing great. I don't see you changing over to, to Raiden, but there we go. I, I just feel like the Kenshi's done so much work. It's right. worth the risk. And that's the thing, because like so I feel like El Kukui went with... Oh, uh, right. Whoa. Yes. 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 I like this because look at how often El Kukui's gone full screen, set up the, uh, the projectiles, and Pure had to just kind of chill out there. But the mid-screen game is where you're suffering the most. We see with the stand two, we see with the whiff punish opportunities that El Kukui has showed. Uh, time and time again, especially in that last game. Nice jump. We get a chance to utilize Sub Zero here because this is a great start for El Kakui. Kakui now trying to walk back again. Has that health lead? Has all the health in the world? Can yeah. just sit patiently and let Pure close in as well. Here goes that mid to check the flawless box. So you already know that Pure's trying. There goes the freeze. Send those out. Follow up here, carry to the corner to catch up. Yeah, Sento still on the board with the whip punish opportunity because of the neutral jump and Sento to cover the tracks. We do get the spin out and blocks the hit grab. Yep, this leaves pure with no Sento right now. Oh, no. But gets the grab. Oh, but the you are still swinging? You, are you kidding me? El Kukui, but dropping the combo, no! You took the chance. You could have died, but still had the wake up reversal and yet dropping the finish. The composure that El Kui needs to have after the, the, that drop is incredible. Going into it, let the actual ice freeze down and just allow Sensu to live here. There we go, gets the launcher. Sandwich position. Oh my god. Oh, it breaks the armor! Yeah, there was no shot. She was making it out of that one. Alright, good pick up, but the break. Saki, I believe you're right. 
I, I definitely feel like I, they're just going back and forth. It's incredible. All right, nice air fireball, though. <laughs> Unless if I cursed it just now. You probably did. <laughs> I've oh, never, I've only cursed one person in Mortal Kombat. I swear to God. It's only happened go. once. This won't kill. This is actually going to scale at the end here, but this will leave uh, Pure in a full screen position. Elf is the same way as well after this knockdown. Right. Mid screen, better said. Oh, just out of range. Good jump. Must be so careful. We do have 195 compared to the 129 from Pure. And with no armor from Sub Zero, you can kind of go for the zoning game if you want to. The stand two does get whip punished, but no finish. Okay, you try to go for the armor spin with no health on the board. It's not going to work this time. Two all in the set. Saki, it's the final game of the night. It is the final game of the night. Final round or final game? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I called it, man. It's just they're playing so good. It's 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 not hard to see. It's but look at El Kakui's run throughout this entire winter side. It's been nothing but three twos the entire way. And going down two three at grand finals into the reset here, we're at two all. Sub Zero. Treasure Chamber. Because the matron superior is the pinnacle of your career. Yeah, because before no El Kukui even made it in a yeah. top eight, it was straight 3 0s. It was 3 0 over Dylock, 3 0 over Blackout. Fight. Holy smokes. All right. Okay, here we go. Literally going to go back and forth right now. We got that first hit here nice. for El Kukui. Buff goes on. Beautiful anti air. Confident Keep the angle. same side in the corner here. Full screen situation once again, so we can go for projectile game. We still have Sub Zero out, which we didn't really get to see too often. The armor setup, so I think we saw like armor a couple times in the last game. All right, pure in this low health state. Fatal blow. There it goes that one hit. That just one single hit to bring yeah. out Senko. And it's just damage galore, bouncing back and forth between the both of them. Yeah, I mean, that was so low to the ground. Nice block, but Sento coming to save the day. Fatal Blow can close this out. Single hit into this one here. So that's a good round here for Pure. Great patience for Pure there. Not breaking when uh, Goro is still on deck. Nice. A couple overhead pick up there. That one already neutral jump. Yeah, uh, that'll be a punish for sure. NYC Playboy with the sub. Thank you so very much. One check. There goes Goro. Yeah. But Pure takes out Goro. He's now on uh, pause on the cooldown. Oh, no, the whiff and still able to dash in. El Kukui locked into crouch block and gonna get thrown again. We saw that uh, a couple games ago that El Kukui would just would not move. All right, push back to the corner, shut down Goro. So long recovery time. Pure with a strong life lead. Block on the diagonal projectile. Mm -hmm. yeah, look at the slowly chipping away, just staying at the max range, full charge. Oh, good back dash. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Pure just needs one significant combo to close this out. And this might do. We have Sento. And that will do 3-2 victory here for Pure. Taking grand finals here at TNS MK number 20.